Bank Stadium in Kansas City, Missouri. It's the San Diego Chargers versus the Kansas City Chiefs. Brought to you by Ford, who invites you to drive the new Ford Aerostar. Have you driven a Ford lately? Your Christmas electronics store. And by Budweiser. Beechwood Age for that clean, crisp taste. This Bud's for you. Hello, everybody, and welcome to Arrowhead Stadium in Kansas City, where today the Kansas City Chiefs will be hosting the San Diego Chargers. The temperature in the mid-40s. I'm Charlie Jones. This is Jimmy Seppolo. Merry Christmas, everybody. This is the end of the season for these two teams. When you played for the Miami Dolphins, you faced this situation only one time in your career. Yeah, Don Shula walked into the locker room and actually threatened players. He said, if I don't see some kind of an effort out there today, you may be playing in another uniform next year. It's an important day for the players because effort will be evaluated after the game is over. So there, there are some things on the line that we might not realize. So today, we're going to do a, a, something a little bit different. We're going to take a look at the stars of both of these teams. For example, we'll be following number 26, Lionel James of San Diego. Lionel James is the smallest player in the NFL, but he may be the biggest surprise. He's already set one NFL record, has a chance for another NFL record today. And we'll be following number 89, Wes Chandler of the Chargers. Charlie, if I had to choose one receiver to begin an NFL receiving core with, it would be Wes Chandler. He's got a great deal of speed, runs great patterns, but more importantly, he's a great competitor. For Kansas City, defensively, their pro bowler safety, Deron Cherry. When you're calling the game today, you'd better mention number 20, Deron Cherry, a lot because he's an impact player, leading interceptor for the club as well as their leading tackler. And their young quarterback, number 14, Todd Blackledge. In the 1983, six quarterbacks taken in the first round. Todd was number two, but he has been the least productive of that group thus far. But Todd, they think, may be a star of the future. He's getting an opportunity to show that today. We mentioned the weather, the temperature, it's ideal, it's in the mid-40s. Unfortunately, with uh, this being the end of the season for two teams that are not going to the playoffs, that means it's a great day for Christmas shopping. And that's what they're doing in Kansas City, a very small crowd. Kansas City winning the toss, and George Shorthose, along with Garcia Lane, are the deep backs set for the return. And Ralph Mojinko kicking off for San Diego. San Diego with a record of 8-7. and seven. And the Kansas City Chiefs with a record of 5 and 10. And we are underway from Arrowhead Stadium. Good kick. Short hose takes it and will down it in the end zone. And Kansas City will go to work on their own 20 yard line first down. Let's look at that offense of the Kansas City Chiefs. And the young quarterback, Todd Blackledge, number 14, will be leading the way. Herman Hurd and Mike Pruitt are the running backs with Carlos Carson and Stephon Carson and Stephon Page, the wide receivers. Walt Arnold is the tight end. And the offensive line of Herkenhoff, Baldinger, Rush, Olderman, and David Luce. So Kansas City goes to work from their own 20-yard line first down. Mike Pruitt is the remaining back, and Arnold is off on the right wing, and we show a slot on the left side. And Blackledge opens with play action. And he goes to Willie Scott, the other tight end. He'll pick up six to the 26-yard line. Second down and four as Mike, Bre uh, Mike Green makes the tackle. And let's look at that defense of the San Diego Chargers. There is a change inside. Lee Williams, Chuck Ian, and Earl Wilson. That's the front three. The change is at linebacker because Billy Ray Smith on injured reserve with back spasms. Greg Bingham also, by the way, out on IR. And that means that Osby and Green will open inside with King and Lowe on the outside. In the secondary, we have Hindi, Walters, Bird, and Jeff Dale. And it's second down and four. And here's Mike Pruitt. And Pruitt has three to the 29, so it'll be third down and one. And Lyndon King brings him down. Charlie Pruitt has come on uh, midseason after being acquired on waivers and has really done very well for the Kansas City Chiefs. Many people around the NFL thought that Pruitt was done in his career after having an all-pro couple of years with the Cleveland Browns. However, John Makovic has said he thinks Pruitt has another couple of years left. And if the one thing they need to do in Kansas City is establish a running game, Mike Pruitt may have to do that for them the early part of next season. Third down, actually less than a yard for the first down. And Mike Pruitt, since coming with Kansas City, has 100-yard game rushing. First time that the Chiefs have had a 100-yard game rushing since 1981. And a little dribble by Herman Hurd, and he bounces it all the way to the 35-yard line, picks up six yards, 
And the first down is Danny Walters is there for the defense along with Jeff Dale. This ball takes a very, very lucky hop for Herman Hurd. It bounced right back up into his hands. He simply misplayed it. Uh, good pitch by Todd Blackledge. And Hurd is looking downfield, trying to set up his blocking pattern in front of him, takes his eye off the ball. And luckily for the Kansas City Chiefs, bounces right back up into his arms. No score in the ball game. We're just a couple of minutes into the first period as Stephon Page comes in. Pruitt, the remaining back. So it is Page and Carson, the two wide receivers. Arnold and Scott are the two tight ends. And here's Pruitt. This time met by Lee Williams. So he'll pick up a yard to the 36. They may give him the 37. It'll be second down. We'll call it second down and nine. Todd Black with Charlie has been much maligned uh, coming in, as we said earlier, the second quarterback taken in that great draft of 1983. The 61st rated quarterback as far as his uh, passing ability is concerned so far. Uh, but they think that he's going to be able to be a star in the future. He's slow with throwing the football a little bit. They think with playing time, he'll improve. Second and nine, Black lets to throw. And almost intercepted by Jeff Dale as Dale cut in underneath. And almost picked it off. Woo! The third down and nine. Back at the 36-yard line. And this has been the problem for Blackledge in the early part of his career. He's thrown a great deal of interceptions. One of the reasons is that he's looking at the exact place he's going to throw the football. If you watch him, he's staring constantly at Herman Hurd number 44. Jeff Dale is simply watching the eyes of the quarterback of Blackledge, and he steps over and nearly picks the football off. Blackledge has to learn to look players off, to take a look at the other side of the formation, then come back and throw to the guy he wants to complete the pass to. The Chargers on a roll as far as interceptions are concerned. They have picked off nine in the last three games, and now they'll show six in the secondary. They're down and nine. Over the middle and overthrown as Stephon Pace just had a half a step on the defenders, but had to have been a perfect pass, but it's incomplete, and we've got a kicking situation. Blackledge just a little bit long on that pass. He did have the receiver wide open coming underneath. And that means that Jim Arnold will be kicking to Lionel James. James misjudges it, takes it back at the 21-yard line. And he'll pick up 11 yards on the return as he is going after the combined yardage record. We'll be talking about that. Walt Arnold with the tackle. We've got a timeout and no score. We'll be back in a moment. And congratulations to Ed White in his 17th year in the National Football League. This is his 241st consecutive game, an NFL record for offensive linemen. Charlie, that's a, as big a, a tribute to his mental uh, toughness and stamina as his physical ability. Playing inside in the trenches, running up against people weighing 250 each week, and yet able to play in 241 consecutive games. He's a tough mental person. Has a knee problem. Did not practice all week long, but he's out there on Sunday. And Anderson swings to the right side. The quarterback is Mark Herman. And he drops it off to Lionel James. A little quick screen to the near side. And James goes from the 32 to the 39-yard line. So he'll add seven more to his total. It'll be second down and three as Kevin Ross was there for the Chiefs, along with Ken Jolly, who was putting the pressure on the quarterback. Now, Mark Herman is starting a quarterback. Dan Fouts has a broken bone in his leg. And we'll, I, I'll give you more details on that in a minute. Lionel James and Tim Spencer or Gary Anderson. Right now is Gary Anderson. Then Joyner, Chandler, Kellen Winslow. Lachey, White, Masick, Leonard, and McKnight. That is the offense for San Diego. Second down and three. And here's Lionel James, and he'll lose a yard on this from the 39 back to the 38. So it's going to be third down and four, as Jolly was there along with Spaney. And let's look at that Kansas City Chief defense. With Moss, Holly, and Lindstrom, the front three. It's kind of a makes your front three. They've lost some players. Daniel Radisick, Spaney, and Jolly. We don't know how long... Gary Spaney can go. He's got a hamstring. Lewis Burris, Cherry, and Kevin Ross. And Duran Cherry has a thigh injury, but is in there. And and knowing him, and speaking of mental toughness, you know he he could well be there the whole ball game. Yeah, Duran Cherry is the kind of guy he'll be in there all day for you. The Chiefs seven in the secondary. They look for the pass third down and four for Mark Herman. It is high and it is incomplete. Going to James. It'll be fourth down and four. I've got an impression of the first offensive set of San Diego. Now, Lionel James needs 170 yards. That's combined yardage. Rushing, 
receiving kickoff returns and punt returns to set a new NFL record. I think San Diego wants to get it in the first quarter. Yeah, they seem to be trying to get that to him right away. He's carried the ball once. They've thrown him two passes in the first three plays. Garcia Lane is set to return the kick of Ralph Mojinko. There's Garcia Lane, free agent out of Ohio State. And here's the punter with a 42.6 yard average. Put it kicker and it is a terrible kick. Drops it off to the side, just a basic slice. You go out of bounds at the Kansas City 44 yard line. That was good for a total of 18 yards. One, eight. We've got a timeout and we have no score. We'll be back in a moment in Kansas City. Uh, Easton of New England came out of that draft. Uh, Kelly. Oh, uh, uh, Kelly in the USFL, right. O'Brien with the Jets, and of course Marino with Miami. So six really top notch quarterbacks. And uh, product, as far as productivity is concerned, Blackledge is probably at number six right now. That's the reason we're going to take a, a little bit of a closer look at him today and see how he's coming along. Sets up very quickly, throws, and he's right on target. Down the sideline is Stephon Payne. Oh! -ho! Six yards on the touchdown pass. And Stefan Page, that is his ninth touchdown of the season. Well, it happens very quickly when you have the kind of especially people Blackledge has on the outside. Again, as we mentioned earlier, he's looking at the same side constantly. But what he gets away with here is that he's able, with the strength of his arm, to throw the ball in between the corner and the safety coming over. Had he stared a little bit longer and not thrown the ball as quickly, that safety, Jeff Dale, would have come over and intercepted that ball. As a result, though, he gets over a little bit too late, and it's a touchdown for the Kansas City Chiefs. 56 yards on the drive in one play, and Nick Lowry adds the point after. And so the Kansas City Chiefs on the board first. They're out in front of San Diego by a score of seven to nothing. And we'll be back with a kickoff in just a moment. Little train, Lionel James, has already handled the ball three times, and he's picked up a total of 17 of that 170 yards that he needs to set a new NFL record. And he is one of the stars that we'll be spotlighting, and he is back on the kickoff return. Nick Lowry will be kicking off for the Kansas City Chiefs. That touchdown of the drive, 56 yards in one place, took a total of nine seconds. And here's James from the 10. He has 10 yards return, 15, 20. About 29 yards on the return, so 29 plus 17, and the record gets closer and closer and closer. Walt Arnold with the tackle for Kansas City. San Diego from their own 39-yard line, first down. Dan Fouts has a, a broken fibula, which is a non-weight-bearing bone, and so could play if it was absolutely necessary. He's on the sideline, but is not scheduled to see any kind of action at all. And the report is, is that he will be able to play in the Pro Bowl, of which he was selected. Quick pass far side is incomplete. Wes Chandler, the intended receiver. And it'll be second down and 10, the ball at the 39-yard line. Now, about Fouts, the last time that these two teams met, Dan Fouts was also injured. And so the Kansas City Chiefs have not seen Fouts this year. No, they have. They've seen Mark Herman quite often. And it's important that Herman gets some playing time today. As you go on through the years, when the Fouts gets injured, he's getting up in years as far as an NFL quarterback is concerned. He might get bumped periodically. It's important to have a backup player that can perform and that the rest of the team is confident they can win behind. And as you see by the scoreboard, Buffalo and Miami take the early leads in those two ball games. And here's James. A couple of yards from the 39 to the 41 yard line. So it'll be third down and eight. Scott Radisek was there to meet him in the hole along with Dave Lindstrom. Charlie, this is turning out to be the uh, James show. <laughs> it is. Four, four out of five, five plays, and he's touched the ball on four occasions already today. Lionel James, five, six and a half. The half inch, very important. 170 pounds, collegiate ball at Auburn. Taken in the fifth round of the draft a year ago. This is his second year in the National Football League. And for the Chargers, their number one rusher and their number one receiver. Herman with pressure, far side. He goes to Charlie Joyner. And Deron Cherry is there for the defense, and it's going to be a first down right at the 50-yard line. 
And Deron Cherry stays down. We'll be back with an injury report, but right now, let's go to Bob Costas. Charlie, as expected, Miami jumps in front of Buffalo at 7-0 after Dan Marino's league-leading 29th touchdown throw of the season. Fine catch in the end zone by Bruce Hardy. In the first at Foxborough, Bengals and Pats tied at 3. First at the Meadowlands, Jets 3, Browns nothing. Back to you, Charlie. And here at Kansas City, the score of the Chiefs 7 and San Diego nothing. And Ron Cherry still down on the far side. The touchdown, a pass from Blackledge to Page, it covered 56 yards. And the drive, 56 yards in one play. And Kansas City 7 and San Diego nothing. And Cherry down for a moment, and he's up on his feet. The reason that he's coming out is that if he stays in at an injury timeout, then it would become a charge timeout. And this way that he comes out, he'll come out for a play. And then it does not cause Kansas City a timeout. All right, but as you mentioned earlier, Charlie, uh, Duran Cherry is a a big competitor and he wants to play in that Pro Bowl very proud of the fact he's yes. been three consecutive years ever since he's taken over that starting position for the Kansas City Chiefs. Mike Robinson has replaced him in the secondary for Kansas City. Herman a little swing to the right side to James and James will add a couple more yards to that total and Scott Radisek makes the tackle at the 47 yard line so it's going to we'll call it second down and seven and let's look at that little train. The little train seems to be a security blanket for Mark Herman. When in doubt, when things get rough, just find the little train and toss the ball to him. Hey, it works every time. I don't know how many times he's been thrown for a loss this season, but I would imagine it doesn't happen very often. He's that kind of a guy, because of his size, he uses it to his advantage. He's small, he's very compact, he's very strong. There's very little to grab onto, and that's an advantage for him. Second down and seven, and Buford McGee gets the call. There's a flag down. The play goes to the 40-yard line of Kansas City. If it holds, it could well be a first down. But now we'll have to check out the marker. That's the first flag of the ball game. Bill Moss makes the stop, and it is holding against the Chargers. That'll cost him 10. We'll bring it back. So the down will go. It'll be second down and 17. Holding Tom Dooley, the referee. 62 offense, second down. Holding on Don Masick, the offensive center. And the ball goes back to the San Diego 43. John Makovic, the head coach of the Kansas City Chiefs, the record for Kansas City is 5 and 10. They got off to a strong start, and then everything just fell apart on them this year. Little play action fake by Herman. And he is right on target, first down. Wes Chandler is the receiver, and Kevin Ross had the coverage. And what? another star we're covering is Wes Chandler. All right, Wes Chandler here, he, he makes the move and comes back to the football. Now, Herman had already released the ball to him. The, the beauty about Wes Chandler is that what we call him is a move receiver. He's got the speed to be able to go deep, but watch the kind of a pattern he runs. He sets it up very well. People have to worry about not only his speed going deep, but his ability to throw them off within an intermediate pattern. That's a move receiver, and Wes Chandler is maybe the best at it in the entire NFL. And a pickup of 21 yards on the play. And remember, second and 17, so it's a first down. And Tim Spencer gets the call. And Ken Jolly was there at the 31-yard line. So Spencer will pick up six. It's second down and four. I feel like San Diego said, okay, now we started off with a little train, and we've used him a lot. We've kind of established that. Now we'll go back and we'll start playing football, and we'll work him back into the normal offense that we use. Because he, he sees a lot of action in the normal offense. He does see quite a bit of action, but... Again, Little Train is the guy they're going to go to all day long, I have a feeling. He's going to get that NFL record one way or another. <laughs> I think you're right. <laughs> Winslow comes wide to the near side. Seavers, the tight end, goes to the far side. Now shows motion coming back as a flanker. And it's dropped off to Jane. 28-yard line. Gain of three yards on the play. It's going to be third down and about a yard for the first down as Gary Spaney, hamstring and all, was there for the defense. Well, I don't know if there is a team in the NFL, maybe in the history of the NFL, that have had as many skilled people, as many quality skilled people, as this Kansas City, or I'm sorry, the San Diego Charger team has. When you look at it, how in the world can you defend against a Lionel James and a Tremaine Johnson and, uh, and Wes Chandler and Charlie Joyner? And the list keeps going on and on and on. They're very heavy in that area. Miami out in front of Buffalo, 7-0. Chicago leading Detroit, 3-0. That game in Detroit. The Jets, as you saw, out in front of Cleveland. And Cincinnati, New England, right, right now are tied. James Jackson. 
right at the 15 yard line as Herman was on target and Lloyd Burroughs was waiting for him. As the little train was decked by a bigger train. Ooh, and James is down. We'll take a look, see what happens. Uh, this is a derailment, Charlie. That's what this is. Now, this is one thing that uh, James does not have to worry about usually. He's got enough quickness to get out of but here he is concentrating on the football and did not see Burris coming over. He had no choice but to take the big hit. Now, as a receiver, when you play, you know that this is going to happen to you. I, I mean, you have to have that feeling when you're looking back and time is running out and the clock in the head says, when I get the ball, they're waiting for me. What really happens to you mentally? Jordy, I, got a, I have a confession. That never happened to me in my entire career. <laughs> you're kidding. That's why I'm sitting up here in the booth right now. I always knew who was around me. I mean, my, my parents taught me something very early in life. Always know who's going to run you over. And here, this is concentration by Algin. Watch this shot. Now, the only thing you could do, they always say that there's two kind of receivers, those who don't want to go across the middles and those who refuse to. Well, Lionel James doesn't like to go across the middle, but obviously he does not refuse. He's happy and up and healthy again. We're happy to see that. And his combined yardage total already is up to 66 yards, which means he now needs only 104 yards in any way, shape, or form to set a new NFL record. But right now for San Diego, the ball is on the Kansas City 15-yard line, and they have a first down. And Herman gives to Buford McGee. And McGee will pick up five to the 10, so it's second down and five. Herman, by the way, has completed six of eight passes for 55 yards. Scott Radisick with the last tackle. I want to mention something about Mark Herman. San Diego's been very pleased with him and his position as a backup quarterback because they have to have you alluded to it that Fouts age, injuries, time, but you to win in the National Football League, you have to have a good backup quarterback. And I think not only has he been a, a good for the ball club, I think it's been a good year for him because mentally he feels that he can certainly perform at the level that he desires in the National Football League. Tim Spencer, the ball carrier on this play, and Spaney makes the tackle. We'll take another look at the scoreboard, and we'll be updating the scores and, and, at, uh, and, and giving you a little more of the idea of, of the playoff situation as those games go on. It's Philadelphia 7, Minnesota nothing, Green Bay and Tampa Bay 7-3, the Battle of the Bays, Atlanta 3 and New Orleans nothing. It's, uh, that's a battle of two teams that are also uh, winding up their season today. Bays, Atlanta three and New Orleans nothing. It's, uh, that's a battle of two teams that are also uh, winding up their season today. The ball on the seven yard line. Third down and two. Kansas City leading seven nothing. Chargers trying to drive back. All the time in the world. Back edge of the end zone. Seavers. They're going to say no. He was out of the end zone. So it's going to be fourth down and two at the seven yard line. It seemed like Herman had an opportunity to run that football in. There was a blocker or two in front of him, but he opted to go down into the end zone to Seavers, and Seavers had the catch, but was bobbling as he went out of bounds. And the field goal team comes in. And that means that Rich Humphrey will be snapping. And Bob Thomas will be kicking. And Mojinko is the holder. This is from the 15, so an attempt of 25 yards. It is up and it is good, and San Diego is on the board. And so the score is Kansas City 7, San Diego 3, with 419 to go in the first. Happy birthday to you. We really should. George Shorthose is 24 years old today, celebrating a birthday, so congratulations, George. Sure, was a lot of speed. Originally drafted by the Miami Dolphins this past season, was released in training camp by them, bounced around a little bit, and finally signed by the Chiefs. Here's the score Kansas City 7, San Diego 3. 4 19, time remaining. We're in the first quarter. And Mojinko kicks off and is taken on the far side by Garcia Lane at the four yard line. He's got a good return as he comes out across the 25 to the 28 yard line. So he has 24 yards on the return as Kansas City goes to work. Now, the last time Kansas City went to work, they went to work very quickly as Blackledge hits Stephon Page with a 56 yard touchdown pass. For the special teams for San Diego, Lyndon King was down to make the tackle. Let's mark it at the 29 yard line. Oh, 
And here's Herman Hurd. 32 yard line. So Herman goes for three. It'll be second down and seven. Herman playing with a bunged up elbow. And he's rushed for about 548 yards prior to the game and has 30 receptions. But normally in a passing situation, he comes out and either Horton or King will come in to replace him. A strong safety, Gil Bird making the last tackle. Carlos Carson coming in motion. A little stutter step behind the quarterback. Blackledge hands off inside to Mike Pruitt. And Pruitt leans across the 36-yard line. So he has four. And it is third down and three. Vince Osby was there. Carlos Carson, one of the good wide receivers for the Kansas City Chiefs. Let's take a look at what he was doing. Well, this little stutter step is just uh, kind of having fun on a day. You know, you're going across <laughs> the middle. There's really not a whole lot to do. You know, you're just going to run the, the defensive back out of the out of the area. And it's just, uh, how are you today, John Handy? I'm just going to let you know that one of these days, I may go back across the formation. So you better keep an eye on me as you cover me across the middle. And now Carson comes out to the right side. And Stefan Page is split inside of it. Blackledge from the shotgun. Third down and three. Steps forward. And it's going to be close. I believe he got it. He needed three to the 39, and he's right there. It's Jeff Dale, the free safety, moved up on him. This is what a young quarterback will do for you, Charlie. Not afraid to tuck the ball away and take off a of field. Blackledge has that strong arm, but he's not afraid to tuck it away and run with the football. He did that well in his college career at Penn State. And here with the Chiefs, he's been known to tuck it away and get upfield, knows where he has to go, and gets the first down just by a couple of inches. The ball just outside the 39-yard line. So officially, it's marked at the 40. Kansas City in their own territory. And Carson again in motion. And this time, he stops right behind the right guard as it's through a little screen block. The give is to Herman Hurd, and he may lose a yard. That was a little lookout block there. They had him blocking. Yeah. Carlos Carson was blocking number 57, King, the linebacker. Now, it's one thing when you have a defensive back you have to kind of shield, and usually they chicken fight. That's what a receiver does. He simply chicken fights. Well, King doesn't want to have anything to do with it. He just says, uh, we'll see you later, and heads toward the football. Loss of one is second down and 11. Carson, this time, he comes wide to this side, and Stephon Page comes with him. And Scott, the tight end. Comes to the right side, double tight in with Arnold on the far side. Pass is incomplete. Hancock, the intended receiver. No, no, that was uh, Page, the intended receiver. John Hendy had the coverage on it. It was a good pass, though, on the rollout and a. And, uh, it was a good pass. They used that uh, moving pocket to try to get a little bit more time for Todd Black. But it, it gives him a little more opportunity to look downfield. He doesn't have to rush himself a little bit. Usually a young quarterback will show those nervous feet. They'll sit in the pocket and get nervous because they feel the pocket closing in on them. It's a good move by John McAvitt to take that young quarterback, roll him out a little bit, give him some time to look downfield and throw the ball. Third down. San Diego showing blitz, and they'll come from the far side with pressure. And going deep, Page, he's there, he's got it! Ten-yard line, Stephon Page. He's got a 56-yarder, and this is 52 yards. Already he is over 100 yards receiving. Great start, we're still in the first quarter. But John Hendy's trying to cover him, and you'll see at the end of this play, he just throws his arms up and says, wait a minute, I was supposed to get deep help. You see the safety is looking upfield. And Hendy thought he was going to get somebody behind him to help him out. Now watch him at the end of this play. He just kind of throws his arms out in disgust, saying, where was the safety? Or, why me? <laughs> Either or. The ball at the 11-yard line of San Diego. It's a first down for Kansas City. 27 seconds and counting. That is the time remaining in the first quarter. Inside handoff to Pruitt. And Pruitt will go to the seven-yard line, so he'll pick up four. And it'll be second down and six. Lee Williams leading the Charger defense at this point. And with that play, time runs out. First quarter is in the books. Chiefs lead it 
seven to three. Here is number 85, Eric Sievers of the San Diego Chargers. We start the second quarter, Kansas City leading seven to three, and they're threatening. Blackledge has completed three of six, but the total is 113 yards and a touchdown. Stefan Page, two receptions, 170, 107, 107, and one touchdown. Second down and six, the ball at the seven yard line. Hancock going in motion. And Herman Hurd cuts back inside. He's got it. A big hole for Herman Hurd coming across the middle. This is the one thing the Kansas City Chiefs have lacked all year long. The ability to come up with the big pass and then show a running game behind it. Here, Hurd gets into the end zone because of a great set of blocks by the offensive line of the Kansas City Chiefs. If they're going to be successful next season, they had better develop that running game along with Herman Hurd. Extra point attempt by Nick Lowry. Bill Kinney holding the quarterback. And it is good. So Kansas City has now moved out in front of San Diego by 11 points. Chiefs 14. Chargers three, back with the kickoff in just a moment. Rodgers is almost standing dead still. There, he's waiting for it. Go up after it. Defensive backs are taught to go up after it. It hits the cast on his left thumb. He never had it. And Sohn goes after it. That is officially an eight-yard fumble recovery for a touchdown. Let's see again here now. Ball is way overthrown. Hits the cast. He's got a glove on underneath it. Rodgers never had it. That should be a, a pass reception for a touchdown. Don't you agree? I think so. That ball was never controlled by Rodgers. Jets could care less at six and then the seven. Is brought to you by Ford and your local Ford dealer. Have you driven a Ford lately? By Nikon, we take the world's greatest pictures. And by Visa, accepted worldwide for shopping, dining, and travel. Visa, it's everywhere you want to be. Lionel James in combined yards now has 82 yards. Again, in case you join us late, he needs 170 in any way, shape, or form, rushing, receiving, or returning, set a new NFL record. Quick out pattern to Eric Sievers, and Sievers goes out of bounds at the 28-yard line. Gain of six, it's second down and four, and Calvin Daniel, the linebacker for the Chiefs, was following him. Sievers is just one of those other skilled people we've talked about earlier. A year ago, Kellen Winslow goes down, uh, Pro Bowl tied in, and Seaver steps in and catches quite a few balls. Winslow is back from that terrible knee injury and is doing quite well, as well as be, can, can be expected by someone with that severe knee injury. Second down and four. Interestingly enough, though, Kellen has not scored a touchdown. Here's the reverse, and of course, it is number 40, Gary Anderson, the speedster. He breaks it open to the 45-yard line of Kansas City. 27 yards on the play for Gary Anderson. Charlie, I'm not sure how you defense the San Diego Charger offense. They do so many things so well. Just when you think you have it going, they throw the ball to uh, uh, the little train James around the one side, then they hand it to him, and who comes back? But somebody like Anderson with a great deal of speed coming across the middle, it's a very tough t uh, team to defense. I don't know what you do if you're a, a coordinator for the opposite squad. First down at the Kansas City 45. Herman gives off inside to Buford McGee, and he is a couple of yards to the 43. Second down and eight. Pete Koch was there for the Chiefs. We were talking last night. You mentioned the fact that you cannot recall a team in the National Football League with as many outstanding players offensively at the skill position. No, and that's that's something they may have to look at as they go into the offseason. They are so heavy in that spot and are lacking in defensively, quite honestly. That's the thing you think about the Chargers. They need some defensive help. But may they may go and trade a couple of those skilled people to try to get some help defensively. And if you could trade two and say draft two, Flea Fricker, James back to Herman and a sack. The Chiefs did not even take a step. The defense was coming right as that got him, and they just kept coming. They certainly did, but again, it's just that one more wrinkle that Don Correa likes to put into an offense. You have to worry about James no matter when he ever touches the football, but here nobody bid on it at all. They just kept coming after Herman. It'll go for a loss of 13 on the play. 
Back to the San Diego 47. Madison from your school, Penn State. Another Nittany Lions. You were there over the weekend before you came in here. Yes, I said. It's hard to get to Penn State. It's hard to get to Penn State from any place in the world. That's right. Herman goes deep. Coverage picked off at the 30 yard line by Kokra. Down the sideline and then just checked out of bounds by Don Mason. This is just a poor choice on the part of Herman. There was a zone coverage sitting back down there. Herman got a little nervous, really had no one to throw the football to. Watch him here, looking downfield. There's nobody in the area, actually. The receiver did well downfield, but three red shirts around. It was only a matter of which red shirt was going to take it back for the interception. And for Sherman Kokroff, that is his third interception on the year. There's a flag down. And for the Chiefs, if it stands up, that is their 25th interception on the season. Conference being held at the 44-yard line on the far side. Five yards on the interception Telling return. Hands, 74 on but Pete Koch, the nose team. tackle defensive First lineman, down. the infraction after the interception, and so Kansas City has the ball, but this time it is at their own 46-yard line. Now Chandler was the receiver who was going downfield, and it appeared Herman was trying to get the. Look at the again, coverage. It's zone coverage, and everybody's standing in front of him and around him, and there was absolutely no way that Herman could have fit that ball in between the red shirts. First down. Blackledge going deep. Comeback pattern by Stefan Page, and Page goes out of bounds at the 24-yard line. 30 yards on the blood. And Gil Bird was chasing him. And right now, Blockledge is just picking the Charger deep secondary apart. And Stephon Page is having a career today. He makes this play, actually. The one thing they teach you as a wide receiver is to keep coming back to the football. There you see Stephon Page was actually not open. And if he had just sat back there and waited for the ball to come to him, it would have been intercepted. But Stephon Page, using those basic fundamentals, continues back toward the quarterback and takes the ball away from a defensive back to make a big play. The ball is at the 24-yard line. Page has three receptions, 136 yards, and a touchdown. And the ball is at the 24-yard line. The give inside is to Mike Pruitt, and Pruitt just leans to the 20-yard line. And for an update, let's go to NFL 85 and Bob Costas. Check this play out at the Meadowlands. The Jets go in front of the Browns 10 to 7. Ken O'Brien's pass appears to be intercepted by Don Rogers, but it's taken away by Kurt Sohn. 39-yard touchdown. Less than two minutes to play, first quarter. Jets back in front by three. The Jets back in front there. Here is Kansas City leading by 11 and on the move. Second down and six at the 20-yard line. And Carson goes in motion. Little play action. Blackledge rolling. And he throws at the 17 yard line. Now that means he threw three yards past the line of scrimmage. That's an illegal forward pass. The flag went down immediately. And Blackledge is hurt on the play. And let's see exactly what happens. Once again, Charlie, this is that moving pocket. They have the uh, bootleg coming across the other way. He had a receiver wide open down the sideline coming it was Arnold coming across the middle of the field who was open momentarily but Illegal pass and lost it down number 14 offense third down Blackledge held onto the ball a little bit too long there and paid for it actually at the end of the play and it was Woodrow Lowe I believe that came up and made contact because at that point he was no longer a quarterback he was a runner Right, he was not aware of the area, the, the uh, spot of the ball. He takes quite a shot. Let's take a look at it. Woodrow low, really levels him. And this is when a, a quarterback is most vulnerable. His arm is up in the air. He's exposed his rib cage. His arm is up, and, and he takes quite a shot. And the penalty is also a loss of down, so that makes the ball back to the 24-yard line. And that means that Bill Kenny will be the quarterback, and it's third down.
Charlie, in talking to Bill Kenny before the game, he was healthy enough to go today. But John McAvick simply made the decision to go with Todd Blackledge to see what he could do. But Kenny, is, he's beaten up, though, physically. It's been a long, tough year for him. I know you asked him before the fog, any part of the body that didn't hurt? He <laughs> says, no, it all hurts. They're down at 10. Kenny, a little timing pattern into the corner. John Hendy and Wayne Davis have the coverage, and we've got some pushing and shoving back at the 33-yard line as tempers begin to flare. And the flag was dropped in the end zone. Now, the official that was standing nearest the play did not drop the flag. The official that was about 15 yards away, who may have, in that case, the better look at the action, because the other one could well have been screened off. And now we'll sort it all out. It's going to be pass interference against the Chargers in the end zone, so. Defensive pass interference, number 20 defense, in the end zone, first down on the one yard line. Charlie, this uh, call has been changed so often over the years, and this year it's different once again. The rule is supposed to be, if the defensive back is looking back toward the quarterback, then there shouldn't be an interference call. There it seemed that he put an arm on the wide receiver, and it seemed to be a good call by the official. First down, goal to go, one yard line. Mike Pruitt, touchdown. And Kansas City now moves out in front, 20 to three with the extra point to come. Fifty four yards on the drive. It was set up by Sherman Cocroft's interception. And Nick Lowry will attempt the point after. And it is good. So the score is Kansas City 21. San Diego three and we have 1141 left to play in the first half 11 minutes and 41 seconds left to go in the second quarter it is Kansas City 21 and San Diego three once through the air and twice on the ground for the Chiefs Stephon Page touchdown reception now heard and Pruitt scoring on the ground and a look at Lionel James and he is set to return the kickoff and Little Train will take it and bobble it and then pick it up at the five. And only get a couple of yards on the return. Let's go back to that pass interference call. That rule once again, Charlie, is if the defensive back is looking back, he put his arm on it, but he put his arm on the receiver first. Then he said, I better cover myself, and he looked back toward the quarterback. It doesn't work that way. Good call by the officials. And an injury report on Todd Blackledge. It is a jammed right thumb. May have hit Woodrow Lowe's helmet as he threw because he came up high on that time of, on his arm. And x-rays are being taken. And as soon as we get a report, of course, we'll pass it on to you. San Diego's ball at their own seven-yard line. First down. Buford McGee. And McGee almost pops it. He'll bounce to the 18-yard line. And he'll pick up the first down. Let's check the scoreboard. Cleveland and the Jets say, how about this? Now tied at 10-10. New England leading Cincinnati. As you know, if New England and the Jets both win, they're in the playoffs. And after that, other people will be explaining it throughout the week. <laughs> <All right. laughs> exactly. I, it's one of those, I got you this far, you're kind of on your own. This is the option between two running backs. And Anderson ends up with the ball and goes to the 21-yard line. So he has three. And it'll be second down and seven. And Kevin Ross was there for the defense. Thus far, little train Lionel James has 85 yards. He's had his hands on the ball 10 times. That's a, with kickoff returns, receiving and rushing. Has he had a punt return yet? I don't think so. Has he had a punt return? No, I don't believe he, he has. Punt no. Return. No. That option play is one of my favorite in all really? football. Two running backs throwing that option. Better than a quarterback, would you say? <laughs> Now this time, Herman did something that Blackledge, you talked about in the first quarter, was not doing. Looking the right side, knowing what was developing on the left, there was nothing on the right, 
looked everybody off defensively and then came back. Right, and you appreciate that as a wide receiver because you don't have somebody bearing down on you the whole time. See him, he's looking to the right, takes it back in, knows Winslow's are coming across the middle on the other side and throws the ball in there. You know, Winslow, you take a look at the surgery that he had, reconstructive surgery to a knee. If you give that same surgery to 10 players, five will come back and five won't. It's the mental aspect that got Kellen Winslow back in uniform as quickly as he came back. And here's Lionel James just trying to scoot under a first down from the 34-yard line. He'll go to the 37. So he'll pick up three, and it'll be second down and seven. Ken Jolly with the stop. The score, Kansas City 21, San Diego 3. Nine and a half minutes left to go in the first half. Ball game dominated by Kansas City. And Miami pulling away from Buffalo. As far as Miami is concerned, if they win, and they and they should win over Buffalo, then they will be the champions of the East. Right, and they can lose out of the playoffs if they get beat by more than 39 points today. They will not get a wild card. Anderson to the 41-yard line. So he picks up four. And it'll be third down and three. Ken Jolly made the tackle. Coming into this weekend's game, Charlie, there were nine teams still fighting for six playoff spots. It may be the most competitive year in the NFL in quite a long time, maybe in its history. Now, also, also with Miami, if they win today, they are the champions. If the Raiders win tomorrow night, then the Raiders will have home field advantage right. all the way through. Exactly. But if the Raiders lose, then Miami would have home field advantage all the way through. Right, that's very important. It's, and I can tell you by playing in the Orange Bowl, they don't lose very often there. It will have a great effect on the AFC Championship. Winslow, and he drops it. Pass is incomplete. It'll be fourth down and three. Coverage by Lloyd Burris. had the coverage. Go ahead, Jimmy. On the other hand, the Raiders don't lose very often to the Coliseum. Well, neither team loses very often, period. Garcia Lane will be the punt returner for Kansas City. And Ralph Mujico will be kicking to Garcia number 41, the free agent out of Ohio State. Pretty good kick. This one taken at the 13 yard line. An excellent coverage by San Diego. And so Kansas City with a three yard return, a 46 yard kick, will have the ball at the 16 yard line. 21 to 3. We'll be back. Hello, everybody. This is Charlie Jones and Jimmy Cephalo. And I have an impression, and that is that right now, in, in, in two teams that are not going to the playoffs, that Kansas City is playing with much more enthusiasm than San Diego. Is they, that your impression? Yeah, I think they are, too. And it may have a, some fact that, that they're playing at home here. Mm -hmm. They didn't have to travel for their final game of the yeah, season. Yeah. They are prepared for some cold weather and got a very nice day. Yeah. Maybe that had something to do with them playing as well as they are. And talking to other players, here's the handoff to Mike Brook, and he has stopped in his tracks by Chuck Ian is that you would think in a way it could almost be the other way. We'll take another look at that play and then I'll come back to my point. Now this is, you know, there's nothing you can do about it when you're running back and as soon as you touch the football, you get decked. There's absolutely nothing that Mike Crook could have done on that play to, to avoid the hit. A loss of three back to uh, the 13 yard line. So it's second down and 13. Second down and 12, I was close. Bill Kenny, the quarterback, pass is complete. He's got a first down, and it's Stefan Page. And what a day he is having. Mike Green makes the tackle. I got to tell you, we talked about the stars of the game that we we're going to be following. We can just move Stefan Page. We're going we're going to, we may go right in the locker room with him at <laughs> halftime. He's having such a great first half. He's on a roll. The confidence has so much to do with this game. You know, it's 90% of the game is played from the neck up anyway, and Stefan Page is on a roll, and you could look for him to say, to go back to the huddle and say, hey, look, throw the football to me. I mean, I may not ever have another day like this in my career. Get it to me. First down at the 30-yard line. Kansas City leading 21-3, to and Kenny back to throw. Pass is high, and it's incomplete. Jonathan Hayes, the number three tight end rookie of Iowa University, was the uh, intended receiver. Woodrow Lowe was there for the defense. No, I, the point that I, that I started to bring up is sometimes for the home team, it's hard to get up emotionally last game of the season when you're not going to the playoffs because you've already packed the bags. And everybody, you know, the truck is loaded. And it's in the parking lot. Right. And I remember a game years ago. I'll come back to it after this play. 
Stephon Page, four receptions, 154 yards already, and a touchdown. Second and 10. And Herman Hurd will pick up five to the 35. It's going to be third down and five. Now, this was before your time, and this was the old Oakland Raiders many years ago when they played in Frank Hill Field. And Cotton Davidson was the quarterback. He was the original quarterback of the Dallas Texans slash now Kansas City Chiefs. And I was in the locker room before the game, and Cotton was putting on his jeans and rolling up his jeans above the knee and then put his, put his football uniform on over it. I'm not kidding you, right? <laughs> Lived in Texas. Soon as the game was, he walked to the locker room, took his pants off, rolled down the jeans, put on a sweatshirt and a jacket. He was in the truck and gone within five minutes at the end of the game. We better check to see if anybody has any jeans <laughs> sticking right. out on the field today. That's the giveaway. <laughs> and first down at the 41-yard line, a six-yard pass. To Walt Arnold, the tight end. Gil Bird was there for immediate coverage. But Kansas City has the first down. They're on their move again. They started at the 16, and now they're out to the 41. No, that's incorrect. How did I miss that? Did I miss it down? I did. I miscalled it by five yards. So that means that Jim Arnold will be kicking. And Lionel James takes it on one hop at the 25-yard line. And we'll get four, maybe five yards on the return. And Ken Jolly was there. A 40-yard kick. Final change on the return. Tackled by Ken Jolly. And we've got five minutes and 53 seconds left to go in the second quarter. The score is Kansas City 21 and San Diego 3. And the Chargers have the ball at their own 30-yard line. Second quarter score. Today's telecast presented by authority of the National Football League intended for the private use of our audience. Any rebroadcast or other use of this telecast without the express written consent of the Kansas City Chiefs and the National Football League is prohibited. Mark Herman. And the pass is complete to Wes Chandler. And Chandler, zone coverage had four defensive backs around him. Again, you see the basics of football for a wide receiver, the veteran Wes Chandler coming back to the football because Herman was hit on the play. It was kind of a wounded duck floating down, but Chandler kept coming back to the quarterback, makes the catch, and gets some nice yards. And two Kansas City Chiefs are down. Kevin Ross is down, and coming up very slowly was Lloyd Burroughs. And so we have an injury timeout. The play went to the Kansas City 47-yard line. So it was good for 23 yards in the first down. And we've talked about the mental attitude of the players going into the last game of the season when you're not going to the playoffs. This is one thing that is on everybody's mind. Avoid an injury. Absolutely. The last game. You never want to go into the last game of the season. Everybody's banged up to some degree after 16 football games, 20 overall counting preseason. And you try to put that in the back of your mind, Charlie, but it always comes out. Whether you're standing around in between plays, it pops into your mind periodically saying, please don't let me get hurt on the last day of the season. Now let's, let's check the scoreboard and we can take a look at all of the scores. And we've got just a little bit of time. So Cleveland and the Jets, they are tied 10-10. Now the, the Jets need to win because New England is winning. If the Jets lose and New England wins and Miami wins, that means that Denver would be uh, one of the wild card teams and they would be out. New England is out in front of Cincinnati 17-6. So New England is in pretty good shape right now. And Miami is in good shape. So the Jets are at this point in the afternoon are the question mark right now in the East. They could have gone from a week ago being in a position to win the championship to the spot now where they may be out of the playoffs if they don't win that football game. Philadelphia 21, Minnesota 7. Ernest Jackson scoring, Green Bay and Tampa Bay. The margin is three. The margin three with Atlanta New Orleans. I mean, we just have an update on that Atlanta score. Gerald Riggs scoring from a couple of yards out is now Atlanta 10. And Minnesota nothing, and Kevin Ross being assisted from the field of combat. And we will try and have a report on him as soon as possible. Uh, he is the second chief to go down with injuries in the ballgame. Todd Blackledge, a jammed right thumb, and x-rays being taken. We do not have a report on the x-rays as yet. Offensively for San Diego, Mark Herman has completed 9 of 14. For 97 yards, and he was intercepted by Sherman Cocroft. Greg Hill replaces Kevin Ross at the corner. And San Diego is a first down. And Herman goes deep. Anderson 
goes high, and in reality, Gary Anderson became a defender and kept Lloyd Burroughs from an interception. Vance was a little underthrown. Yeah, Anderson was projected a few years ago as a wide receiver and not as a running back. Here in this position, Charlie, you're absolutely right. He turns into defensive back. When you're going up in the air like this as a wide receiver, you got to think, the ball is mine. You have to have enough confidence in your ability to think that if it's between you and defensive back, one-on-one, -on -one, you're going to come up with the play. Anderson there nearly came up with a nice play. Second down and 10 back at the 47-yard line. One of the reasons that Anderson said that he went into the USFL is that he wanted to, to run the ball. And, uh, and originally the Chargers wanted him only as a receiver. And here's Lionel James, just spinning and fighting his way to the 42-yard line, so he picks up five yards. It's going to be third down and five. And something I... Scott Radisek making the tackle. Uh, just, a, just an observation. The report on Kevin Ross is an injury to the right knee. They do not know how bad. All of a sudden, do I have the impression that Kansas City has figured out that San Diego was trying to get the record for Lionel James and Kansas City doesn't want him to have the record. It seems as if they're scouting him out a little bit more than they were early in the first quarter. Well, I think it comes down to saying that uh, maybe not about the record, but simply if we want to win the football game, we've got to shut down Lionel James so they go out and try to attack him. Herman throwing behind Kellen Winslow. Winslow in a slugfest, and he throws a couple of strong elbows. Kellen will be ejected for the ball game. That's going to be the end of the season here. Was that Lloyd Burris that, boy, he turned around and swung one elbow and then decked him with another. And the officials were right there. Now, that was the way that I saw it, and let's see how the replay called. Charlie, there's really little excuse for this. There's a lot of frustration out in the field, two teams that are not going to the playoffs. But Kellen Winslow is a veteran in this uh, league. Yeah, he's got his got face, face mask, mask. Goal. that's Burris fine. Got a face mask. But there's absolutely no reason or purpose now watch this for one. this kind of action. And that one. Now, I would say that the Kellen should be ejected. That would be my opinion. First and foul, I guess. Well, they may the, I'm not sure the official saw the face mask. Well, you know, in defense of, of Kellen Winslow, his face mask, wa face mask was pulled. Yes. But there is absolutely no reason to go with two big over the roundhouse shots. Maybe, maybe the one retaliation. Now, there's the face mask that was not First called. First foul, unnecessary roughness number 80 offense. It's fourth down. Also, as a player, Charlie, you, you're told early, and it, it it happens all the time. The official never sees the first uh, the first no. shot. It's only the second one he sees, and Kellen took care of it because the third one came right behind him. He was not ejected, so I was wrong there. Now it was a dead ball foul. The play was over. That means it is fourth down. The penalty yardage goes back, and it means that Mojinka will be kicking to Garcia Lane. No, I thought he'd get ejected because of the second shot, not yes. the first one. I agree second. with you. Who good kick? Lane takes it at the 11-yard line and returns to the 17. We've got four minutes and 17 seconds. That is the time remaining in the first half. Kansas City has the ball, and they lead 21 to 3. 47 yards on the kick. And Derry Nelson was down with the coverage for San Diego. Be sure and stay with us for halftime, NFL 85, with... Bob, Ahmad, and Axe, of course, they will be updating all the other games and uh, hopefully give us an idea of what exactly is working, and we'll have a special interview for you at halftime. Kansas City from their own 18-yard line, first down. Mike Pruitt is the remaining back, and he just leans to the 21, so he has three, and it is second down and seven. Mike Pruitt on the carry. Chuck Ian, the nose tackle, was the man who stopped him for San Diego. And there's the time remaining in the second quarter. Kansas City with a very comfortable 21-3 lead. Carson coming in motion for the Chiefs. Kenny has pressure, and the pass is complete to the tight end, Walt Arnold, and Arnold moves out to the 38-yard line. He'll pick up 17 yards before Woodrow Lowe makes the tackle, along with Vince Osby, and there's a marker down back at the 21-yard line. And it will be against Kansas City, so it'll erase the game, and they'll step off the penalty against the Chiefs. Holding, 70 offense. Second down. Second down. 
holding on Billy Shields, who was a former San Diego Chargers with San Diego and then San Francisco, the New York Jets before coming to Kansas City. That play was made possible by the strength of Bill Kenny's arm. He was drafted by the Dolphins, by the way. He was the second last player taken in the 12th round back in 1978. <laughs> Has such a strong arm that one day during practice, threw a pass, hit Bill Arnsbarger, our defensive coordinator in the ear, and drew blood, knocked Bill completely cold. Very strong arm. Little looping pass outside to Herman Hurd. And Herman goes to the 16-yard line, maybe the 17. Let's see where they're going to spot it. And Mike Green picked him up. Mark it at the 16-yard line. So it goes for five. It's going to be third down and 12. When these two teams meet, it's almost always an offensive explosion. And we've had only thus far one half of the explosion. That is the offense of Kansas City, because Charger offense has been pretty well shut down thus far. Going deep, and he fires it, and Page is there! The ball Page will be over 200 yards now. Bob Page is one guy who doesn't want the season to end out. He's just getting in gear. Woo! 84 yards. This had to be a breakdown by the secondary of the San Diego Chargers because nobody was anywhere near Bill Kenny. Uh, looks the safety off. That's exactly what happened. Kenny took a look away from the play and came back to Stephon Page, who got over the top of the safety. Touchdown over 200 yards already receiving for, for Stephon Page in just the first half alone. And Nick Lowry will attempt the point after. Page has scored two touchdowns in the game. He has now a total of 10 on the year. Five receptions, 238 yards, and two touchdowns. And the extra point is good, and that makes the score 28 to 3. And Jimmy, I'm going to go back. To, you mentioned this about Stephon Page earlier. Hey, you got a day like this? He goes back to the huddle and says, keep throwing. I'm hot. Oh, yeah. He doesn't want to come out of this football game. He wants him to throw on every down, and he wants him to get the, he wants the ball to be thrown to him on every down. He's unconscious. 238 yards in the first half. He wants his season to continue forever. And I don't blame him. Oh, that's I don't either. That's almost a career for some reason. That was a career for me, Charles. <laughs> I didn't mean it that way. <laughs> <laughs> but, oh. And it's 28 to 3, and the, the Chiefs just are rolling along. I went seasons without 238 <laughs> yards. <laughs> <laughs> Woo! And that is a new Chief receiving record for yardage. 213 was the previous club record. And it was Curtis McClinton. Is that right? Yes. A long, that's a long time ago. And there is Fouts. Dan not scheduled to play. Has that uh, cracked fibula. And the wind now beginning to whip around and blows the ball off of the team. So Duran Cherry, who was injured earlier in the ball game, just shaking up a bit, is all right, and he will come out and he's going to hold it. At the two-yard line, it's Lionel James. He's to the ten. Looks for a block, does not get it, but gets around Walt Arnold, and then scoots out of bounds near the 30-yard line. Fishers are going to mark it about the 28 of the 29. Lewis Cooper was there for Kansas City. So San Diego now with 2.13 to go in the first half. They need to get an off. They need to get something on the board so they've got some enthusiasm going into halftime. Yeah, they seemed in the first quarter to be splitting the ball up a little bit. I know James touched it quite often, but you remember the reverse they came back with Anderson. They threw the ball downfield to West Chandler, and now they seem to have gotten away from that. It seems to be exclusively the running game with Lionel James. If they're going to be successful and put some points on the board, they're going to have to open up the offense like they're used to doing. 
here is Lionel James from the 28 to the 31 yard line. So he'll pick up three. His total on the day is now unofficially 131 yards. He's handled the ball 15 times. And again, he needs 170 yards to set a new record. We've got the two minute warning. Timeout. Back in a moment. For well, Kansas City leading by 25 points. 28 to 3 with two minutes to go in the first half. And Mark Herman is back to throw for the Chargers. So San Diego's got to throw. Lionel James. Oh, he is. Woo! He's going to lose a yard to the 30. And it's going to be third down and eight. Second time in the ballgame that he has been decked. Albert Lewis gets it this time. Chris Little trade twice in oh. one game takes two of the biggest shots I've seen all year long in the NFL. Now, we mentioned before he's a little guy, but he usually uses the, his size to his advantage. Uh, you know, he's small, close to the ground, very compact, has a lot of strength, though, and Lionel James is going to get that record one way or another. Okay, that's four McDLTs, two large fries, and a Diet Coke. Right. Kevin Ross, number 31, back in the ballgame defensively for the Kansas City Chiefs. Kevin Ross has been bouncing back his entire life, Charlie. He was hit by, now we can laugh about it, he was hit by cars three times between the ages of 7 and 15. Once when he was 7, once when he was 11, another when he was 15. Kemp bouncing back, and now he hit by a truck out here in the, <laughs> in the second quarter of the football game, and... Uh, amazing that he's a professional football player after all of his injuries earlier on. Tough little guy. Obviously a defensive player in the National Football League, and here's how he got hurt earlier. He is number 31, and it was his own man that took him out, and he ended up, if you recall, being carried from the field. Now, that was a loss of three yards on that last play to Lionel James. He marked it back at the 28-yard line, and Herman throws, and this one is intercepted at the 45-yard line. It is Mark Robinson with the interception. James, the intended receiver. And that is the second time in the ball game that Mark Herman has been picked off. And for Robinson, his first interception of the year. And a very similar situation, too, Charlie. Here, again, there is, I don't know how he thought he could fit the ball in here. There is three or four red jerseys around Lionel James, a zone defense down the middle of the field, and Mark Robinson simply had to step in in front of the football, and there could have been another three people intercepting that ball for the Kansas City Chiefs. 19 yards on the return for Mark Robinson. The line of scrimmage is the San Diego 26-yard line. Kansas City, two timeouts remaining, plenty of time in the first half. 137 left to go, and the Chiefs want to stack some more points onto their lead of 28-3. Kenny fires far side, and guess who? It's the Stefan Page Show. Danny Walter is the man who stopped it. You talk about the play. I'm going to add up some figures here. We've got a big story work. Well, Stefan Page, the only thing that might keep him from an all-time NFL record for receiving yardage is an injury, and here he goes down a little bit. Man-to-man -man coverage, he pushes off with that left arm, and a good receiver will do that. You know, you, you come downfield and you push off just a little bit, but he seems to catch his right leg behind him, and the only thing that might stop Stefan Page today is an injury. Now, at this point, and he is down, at this point, Page has, in receiving yardage, 259 yards and now we, we still have a minute 31 to go in the first half but 259 yards now the all-time nfl record one of the oldest records in the book goes back to the year 1945 in cleveland it was the cleveland rams which then became the los angeles rams and the receiver was jim Dippen, the great all-america from the university of arkansas and the record is 303 yards so right now he is only 64 yards away from that record. That's just a couple of receptions. This guy's yeah, call it. It's one Woo. reception for him. <laughs> 64. Is that, did I tell it? It's 59. That'd be 40. No, 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 no. 200. Now, now, now listen to me, everybody. 303 yards. That's the record. Now subtract from that 259. And now what is that? What is our total? We're having a little quiz. And so the don't, nine. Don't ask me, Charlie. <laughs> so 13 <laughs> take away nine is four. I borrowed the one and I borrowed it. So it is 44 to tie and 45 to break. Or somewhere in that Somewhere in that somewhere, area. Somewhere in that neighborhood. I don't know. Does anybody have a calculator in the booth? <laughs> I, we do. Hey, we do. We do. <laughs> I crack crew here. We're going right to the calculator. 
Meanwhile, Stefan is, you know, he also has scored two touchdowns. 303 minus 259. 44 to tie, 45 to break. I was a, a journalism major at Penn State, Charlie. Don't, don't ask me these difficult math questions. I just talk. I just <laughs> try to talk. <laughs> the ball is at the six-yard line. It is first down and goal to go. And as you can tell, it's the end of the season for Cephalo and Jones. <laughs> and you immediately got top billing. <laughs> his complete touchdown. Jonathan Hayes, this is his hey, his first touchdown in the National Football League. The rookie, taken in the second round from Iowa, and he has his first one. He'll hang on to that ball. You know what's important about today's game, Charlie? For the Kansas City Chiefs, this is a builder for next season. It's been a difficult year for them, but they're playing as well as they have all year long. And that's important as they go into their off-season conditioning program, preparing for their summer camp coming up. They'll remember back to this day and realize they've got a lot of potential and can be very competitive in this league. But on the other hand, what's it doing to San Diego? Well, it's a demoralizing effect on them. You know, you go into the locker room losing this badly at halftime, you got to think, hey, next year we're going to remember this loss. It's a difficult time for them. The extra point attempt is up, and it is good. And Kansas City just continues to roll. And they now lead 35 to 3. And there's Jonathan Hayes, as you saw, and as I mentioned, and he handed the ball to Anthony Hancock because he was going in to block on the extra point team. And you know, he said, and don't let this one yeah, go because right. I want it. I want to take it in halftime. There's a big smile. And that has to be a special feeling. When, what, what was the feeling of your first touchdown that you scored the National Football League? During the regular season, I remember it very well. It was, uh, it was on national television. It was a Monday night game against the Cincinnati Bengals. And it's something you don't forget. It's a, it's a play that I'll remember for the rest of my life, and I'm sure he will also. NFL 85 with a special interview, so be sure and stay with us at halftime. Bill Kenny, who has replaced Todd Blackledge, who was injured the first half, Kenny has completed five of seven for 131 yards and two touchdowns. And that, now Nick Lowry will be kicking off. Yes. That's going to be a story coming into training camp next year. John McAfee had said that the quarterback position will be up for grabs at training camp next year between Blackledge and Kenny. And Lionel James is set for the return. And Little Train takes it at the four-yard line, and he's out to the 10, 50. Good return. And returns to the 29-yard line. So Little Train is getting close to his NFL record, needing 170 yards, any kind of yardage. Mike Robinson with the tackle for Kansas City. The record that he is going at is the combined yardage record held by Terry Metcalf of 2,462 yards in a season. Well, that's a lot of yardage. Woo. San Diego from their own 29-yard line. And 34-yard line, Lionel James, he picks up five, and that means unofficially we have him with 157 yards. He's handled the ball 18 times. Isn't it amazing how Herman can find the smallest man on the field yeah. so often? <laughs> he was looking to the other side of the field and went in doubt, come back to that security blanket, Lionel James, adding to his total. So he is unofficially 13 yards away from the combined yardage record. Interesting, we've got two records working right now. One is a season record, and the other is a single game record. Here's the screen to James. And James goes to the 39-yard line, so he has five more. And may pick up the first down here. Mike Robinson with the tackle. So James needs now only eight yards. And it is a first down. And Herman goes deep. And the pass is incomplete. Jesse Bindros is the intended receiver. That stops the clock with 48 seconds left to go in the second quarter. Kevin Ross in the cover. Been a frustrating afternoon thus far for Herman. But as he looks back at this season, he's got to be happy with what he's done as yep. a backup to Dan Fouts. He's performed very well. And today should not be an indication of his ability. They're happy with him here in the San Diego offensive strategy. 
Seven touchdowns and now nine interceptions on the season. He suffered two today. But his completion average was just over 66%. Tipped and then caught. Charlie Joyner has a big first down at the 35-yard line of Kansas City. And the Chargers will stop the clock with a timeout. 38 seconds left to go. Mark Robinson was there for the defense. The play good for 20 yards. You need some of these as a wide receiver. You know, this is one that Charlie should not put down as he continues to add up the receptions in the NFL record book, but he'll take it anyway. Charlie needs, you know, there's another one. It's, uh, he's not off to that quick a start, but I think he needs 163 yards. In fact, I know that he needs 163 yards to break the all-time record of Don Maynard of 11,839 yards. And maybe as a viewer, you're saying, hey, you know, you're doing a little bit too much on the numbers, and maybe we are, but that's one of the things that are going because this is the end of the season for these two teams. And when you talk about Charlie Joyner, certainly a Hall of Famer in the very oh, yeah. near future. Uh, he's announced that he's going to come back next season. He's yes. going to get another year. Yep. Oh, yeah. Let's look at the scoreboard. Jets out in front. New England out in front. Miami out in front. And if, if that stands, then Miami will be the champions in the East, and New England and, and the Jets will be the wild card. Right. The Patriots would play the Jets next week in the Meadowlands, and then the Dolphins would have a week off and would host that first game at least. Uh, for the first week of the regular playoffs after the wild card action. And the Meadowlands can be very crowded next weekend. That's right. There would be actually two <laughs> games scheduled for there. The Giants are in after winning yesterday, and the Jets would be in if they win today, both home games for New York clubs. Well, it's just a Sunday afternoon doubleheader. Let's solve it all. The pass is complete to West Chandler, and Chandler goes out of bounds just inside the 20-yard line, so he'll pick up 16 on the play and a first down, and there's 31 seconds left to go in the first half. And don't forget at halftime, NFL 85 scores and highlights and a special interview all coming your way. Jerry Blanton was uh, Kansas City Chief being helped to the locker. He was kicked in the stomach is the report that we have. And we'll try and update that. We've, we've got the injuries, but we don't know how everybody is doing until they come back in the ball game. But we'll try and have that for you when we start the second half. Herman gets the pressure. The pass is complete as he comes over to Jesse Bindros. And Bindros goes to the 15-yard line, a gain of five. And it's second down and five. And we'll stop the clock now with 22 seconds left to go in the second quarter. And a big mistake by Jesse Bindros. They're along the sideline, obviously not going anywhere. Got to get out of bounds and save that time out for them. It's Kansas City 35 and San Diego 3. And... And for Kansas City, Todd Blackledge was a starting quarterback, and he hit Stephon Page with a 56-yard touchdown pass. The Chargers came back to counter with Bob Thomas's 24-yard field goal. Since then, it's been all Kansas City. Herman Hurd scored from seven yards out. That was a 71-yard drive. Mike Pruitt scored from a yard out. That was a 54-yard drive that Sherman Carcroft set it up with his interview. And then the big one, the 84-yard touchdown pass from Bill Kenny, because Kenny had come in, Blackledge has jammed his right thumb. 84 yards from Kenny to Stephon Page, and then Kenny to the young tight end, Jonathan Hayes, for the next touchdown. The working story, Stephon Page, two touchdowns, 259 yards receiving, needing only 45 yards to set another NFL record. Boy, that's, a, that's one that's been in the books since 1945. One that every receiver thinks about, <laughs> but never, but not never for a long. That's right. <laughs> when play resumes, the ball will be at the just inside the 14-yard line, so it would be second down and four. And only a three-man rush, and Herman steps away from it and throws as he is going down, and the pass is incomplete. Lionel James trying to come back to it and couldn't quite get there as Herman ran out of time. And Kellen Winslow was all alone the corner of the end zone. Kellen walks back shaking his head. He knew he was, watch Kellen to the right of your screen, up top, number 80. Watch him get behind the secondary. Stick your hand up, Kellen. Look at that, I'm <laughs> wide open. Throw the football to me. He's looking at a touchdown, square in the eyes, but Herman did not get the football to him. Third down. Joyner reverses, cuts back to the right side, cuts over the middle. Pass is thrown far side and completed to Bindros. And Lloyd Burroughs, the strong safety, brings him down right as he makes the reception, and the Chargers take a timeout. 
Lloyd Burris on the stop. And I believe that's their last time out. See, in that situation, that's when the Bendross mistake earlier hurts him. He could not get a bounce on that, on that particular play, but a team will always try and save one timeout for a field goal. Here with six seconds left now, they either have to have an incomplete pass or they have to go ahead and forego the field goal. But trailing 35 to 3, are they not in, you know, aren't they in four downs? Oh, right yeah. Now? You've got to yeah. go for the touchdown. Yeah. You have to. But in the situation. Normal situation. Right. Yeah, that's you, right. You think about yeah. these things out there and you say, yeah. I've got to get out of bounds when I have the opportunity yeah. to save the extra yeah. uh, timeout for a field goal if we need it. In six seconds. The ball at the eight-yard line. You can get two plays out. Yeah, you sure can. You can get two plays out, and you have to realize as a quarterback that uh, you have to have that clock in your head, realizing that with eight seconds left, if somebody's open, get the ball there immediately. If not, throw out of bounds and come back and try to get it on the second play. Mark Herman has completed 16 of 26 for 157 yards. He has thrown two interceptions, one of which led to a touchdown drive. Is there a particular pattern or play that you come to here, like the timing pattern in the right-hand corner? Or that type of action that you have inside the 10 yard line. Well, picks are big this year in the NFL. Fumble on the snap, dropped it, and then came up and tried it. Chandler in the right hand corner. Greg Hill had the coverage. And we've got three seconds left, so they can do it one more time. There are actually two plays that teams like inside the 10 yard line, Charlie. One is the pick play, which officials are becoming more attuned to and have been throwing more flags. The second is that play where they simply get a receiver to go to the quarter of the end zone. The quarterback puts the ball up in the air, and it's either a touchdown or the receiver is told to knock the ball down and avoid the interception. And we're going to have a field goal attempt from the 16 yard line, an attempt of 26 yards. I'm not sure I understand it. And that's what we've got. 26 yards away, and it is good. And so Bob Thomas has hit twice, 24 yards and 26 yards out as the gun sounds. And the end of the first half, it is Kansas City 35. And San Diego 6 with a pair of field goals. I'm, I'm amazed at that call. Yeah, I am too. With uh, At the eight-yard line with three seconds left to go and a half down by that many points, you would think they have to go for a touchdown and try to get some more points on the board. But I wonder that, but then you wonder, as explosive as San Diego's offense is and can be in the second half, that you could say, we can get the three, it may pay off at the end of the ballgame. It may, but, I'll, but I still have to think, <laughs> down that many points, let's go for the touchdown, especially in this situation. Uh, not going to the playoffs, just try to get work on that 10-yard offense. At the end of the first half, it's Kansas City 35, San Diego 6. NFL 85 halftime activities will continue in a moment, and we'll be right back after these messages from your local station. He made the statement in the San Diego papers this week, around midweek, that, uh, that he would make an announcement on Monday. He's very pleased with the progression, regardless of the outcome of this game, and regardless of whether Fouts, and they didn't know how bad his injury was at that time, whether he played or not, that it wouldn't, you know, that Coriel's future would not rely on him playing a quarterback or not that it wouldn't you know that Coriel's future would not rely on him playing a quarterback that was injured and that uh, he liked the progression and thought that they were on the road uh, to doing good things and that he would make an announcement next Monday but he would make it in his home in Stockton and not San Diego and therefore all of the observation by the press and the media has been is that Coriel will be back and uh, only need that the uh, that there be a formal announcement on Monday and that's never been denied so I think that both coaches at the first of the week, you know, where it's a little questionable. And now, uh, you know, once they got past midweek is that they'll both be back next year. And I think that's good news for both teams. Do you think that even with the, uh, the score at this bad, 35-60 will not affect the whatsoever? I don't think it'll have any whatsoever. effect. Not at all. Now let's check the stats in the first half. And, and the numbers here will relate the numbers that you see of Kansas City 35 and San Diego 6. It's a little misleading, though. You know, total yardage, 311 to 224, does not indicate uh, the difference in score at this point in the football game. The big category is turnovers, two for the San Diego Chargers and none for the Kansas City Chiefs. Look at the interesting uh, statistic as far as time of possession. 16 minutes for the Chargers, uh, 14 for the Chiefs, yet they're down by uh, quite a few touchdowns at this point it's in the football 35 game. 35 to 6, just a pair of field goals for, for San Diego. But now you had to figure in and it seems in, in, in almost every game, there is an unknown factor. And you think about it and you talk about it when we prepare for telecast. And as, uh, as Dick Lowry almost stumbled going back to get ready to kick off. And the, what did he overlook? We overlooked Stephon Pace. He's having an unbelievable day receiving. 
And Lionel James needs only seven yards. And he's got it. Right there is the new NFL record combined yardage. And that is rushing, receiving kickoff returns and punt returns. Bruce King makes the tackle, and there it is. Another new record in the National Football League. Where couldn't go to a nicer, tougher young man than Little Train. Well, Little Train, you know, they talk about his size, only five, six and a half. And as you said, that half inch is very important. Oh, yeah. But you can't measure his heart. And Lionel James is, is just in his second year setting a brand new record. I have a feeling he knows about it, walking it towards oh, the sure. sideline. I want to ask you about this. San Diego from their own 24-yard line. Here's Buford McGee. And he pops it to the 50. And then is chased out of bounds. They're going to mark it at the 32-yard line of Kansas City. Charlie, that was the option play here. Buford McGee was looking back for Anderson to pitch the football back to, but nobody picked it. McGee, and actually trailing McGee down the sideline is Anderson still. He's thinking, please pitch that football to me. And a gain of 44 yards on the play. Number 21, Buford McGee, in his second year, he was a, an 11th round draft choice a year ago. At the 32, first down. Sideline pattern is incomplete. West Chandler, the intended receiver. And it is second down to 10. Let me just go back. We, as we saw Little Train break the record, when, as a player, when records, individual for you, team records, or a teammate's record that are possibilities, is everybody on the sideline aware of it when you get to this time of the year? Oh, I think so. I think the players around you are more aware than you are. I can remember a year ago when Dan Marino was trying to set the record for the most touchdown throws in a single season. I went off the board. It's about to 100 to 1 in Vegas to catch the, <laughs> the 38 touchdown pass, but I did. And the first thought was that's Danny's touchdown record. Uh huh. Good. And Lionel James, the trade, <laughs> it's rolling down the track. The, the yardage is they just oh, adding it up from here on. Ken Jolly with the stop. Let's take another look. He just make it more difficult for him to catch that record again next year because you just get the feeling that Lionel James, the runner, is going to be around for quite a long time in the NFL. And I'm sure he'll set many more records. He's got a couple other ones he might be able to set today. For example, he may go over the 1,000-yard mark for receiving yardage for a running back. That's never been done before. He's got that one. Seven for 34 receiving. So he has a first running back. And uh, we were looking at the the big one rather than that one. So he's the first running back in the history of the National Football League in a thousand yards receiving. And just in his second year. Oh, yeah. First and 10 at the 18 yard line. Little play action. Herman incomplete. And he misses Gary Anderson in the left flat. And I've got an injury report. Todd Blackledge, a dislocated thumb, so he is out, will not return. For the record, Bill Kenny's the quarterback. The disaster quarterback is Duran Cherry. And Duran is not that healthy. He's bothered by a bad thigh injury. Jerry Blanton of the Chiefs is out with a bruised sternum. He's not expected to return. And number 83, Stefan Page has bruised ribs. Remember that shot he took at about the six yard line on the far sideline? It is questionable, questionable on his return. We'll just wait and see when Kansas City gets the ball. Here's Little Train to the 15-yard line. And Gary Spaney was there to stop. It's going to be third down. Third down in around seven. And the ball at the 15-yard line. And I'm beginning to wonder that if San Diego can take the opening kickoff and go in and score, now that it'll be a 35 to 13 ball game. But Maybe they made that right decision with that field goal at the end of the first half, figuring they can put enough points on the board that three points might be the difference. And the pass is, should have been intercepted. It was high, and Deron Cherry may have just lost his concentration. It was like he had it right in his hands. And then he said, what did I do? Deron Cherry has been limping the entire half. And uh, you talked about his mental aggressiveness, his mental toughness. He's been limping the entire game, has nothing to gain by continuing out there, but wants to play well. You see he's not as smooth as usual. And this ball, you know, you wonder why he drops it. He's got a pair of gloves on. The first thing our coach will say to you was, get the gloves off. But Deron Cherry has made enough interception with gloves to be able to make that play. 32-yard field goal attempt. And it is no good. 
as Bob Thomas misses to the left side from 32 yards away. So the Chargers put the drive together, but they cannot tack any points at the end. It's still 35 to 6, Kansas City. Today's game is brought to you by Plymouth, a division of the Chrysler Corporation. Plymouth, the pride is back, born in America again. By Old Milwaukee and Old Milwaukee Light, it doesn't get any better than this. And by IBM and the growing family of IBM personal computers. This is Charlie Jones and Jim Cephalo. We're at Arrowhead Stadium in Kansas City, and number 83, Stefan Page, bruised ribs and all, is going for the record. He has got the Chiefs record. Now he's going after the NFL record. Carson goes in motion. And Kenny hands off to Mike Pruitt. Pruitt has four yards to the 24-yard line. Mike Green brings Mike him down. It'll be second down and six. Charlie, it appears that Stephon Page is wearing a flak jacket. It appears if we can get a shot of him, he's a little thick around the midsection to protect those injured ribs. I wonder how that will affect his play, his ability to run patterns here in the second half as he goes after that record. Just bulking up for the winter months. <laughs> you can't see the, the padding under there. Listen, that has to be distracting. I want your opinion after this play. Pass is complete tight end Walt Arnold, and he'll have the first down at the 33-yard line. Gain of nine in the first down. Again, Mike Green with the tackle. Does that bother you? Because you played the first half without it, and now you have something on an encumbrance. Yeah, being a running back, a wide receiver, a quarterback, kind of like a thoroughbred, the slightest bit of, of discomfort will affect the way you run a pattern, the way you release the football, or the way you run with it. So it will affect Stephon Page here in the second half. Did you ever wear one when you played? No, I never wore a, a flag jacket. Never got hit in the ribs. I told you, Charlie, I always knew who was around me all the time. <laughs> you ran with the quick outs to the sideline. <laughs> First down at the 33. Kenny's back to throw, and he sets up a screen, and it's knocked away. There's a flag down. He was trying to hit Herman Hurd on a screen, and Lee Williams infiltrated the screen, and there's markers on the play. Earl Wilson was also there for the Charger defense. Offside, 93 defense. The reason that Earl was there is he got, he caught a flyer, as you say, in track and field. He started before the snap. So with the penalty, take the ball out to the 38-yard line, and the down goes over first down and five. Not been that many penalties in the ball game. No, there have. It's been a clean half. With the exception of that one play with the altercation. That That's not that bad. First and five. 11 and a half minutes left to go. We're in the third quarter. Kansas City with a very comfortable lead. Pass far side to Carlos Carson. And he will pick up the first down at the 45-yard line. He needed five, and he got about seven in the first down. Lyndon King is the man who was there for San Diego as we paused briefly for station identification. This is the NBC Television Network. KCST-TV, San Diego. This is Charlie Jones and Jimmy Cephalo with 11 minutes left to go in the third quarter. Arrowhead Stadium, Kansas City, temperature in the 40s, and Chiefs very comfortably in front of San Diego by a score of 35 to 6, and Kansas City has the ball. And here's Mike Pruitt. Little stutter step, and then he'll lean forward for a yard to the 47-yard line. It'll be second down at 9. Fred Robinson made the tackle. Now, when you were talking with Lamar Hunt before the ballgame, one of the things that he mentioned is that when Kansas City this year has played well, particularly against opponents in the West, in their division, that they have beat. You know, they, they beat the Raiders, they beat the Seahawks, and now comfortably in front of San Diego. And, and last week against Denver, they, they put up a tremendous battle, losing it at the end of the ballgame. So his point was when they played well, he said they could play with anybody in the National Football League, but they weren't playing well every week. Well, that's what makes it so frustrating for them. They seem to have the ability to play well on certain weeks, but not well on others. Anthony Hancock in motion. And here's Herman Hurd. The ball popping loose, and San Diego comes up with it. That's Vince Osby. And it's going to be a touchdown. Vince Osby, number 56, coming up 
with the fumble. We'll just have to wait and see what happens. It appears that somebody just stripped the football from him. The ball comes loose. He was going over the pile. It was a clear fumble, but no one saw the football come out except for the linebacking crew of the San Diego Chargers. It seems like any one of them could have picked it up. And he steps out of bounds well upfield. So it's at the seven-yard seven yard line. line. I thought he went in, but no. It's, it's the seven-yard line. First down goal to go. And Vince Osby makes a big play for San Diego. And Lionel James is going to lose some of that yardage that he's worked so hard to get. Albert Lewis makes the tackle. And the ball will go back to the 11-yard line where it's second down and goal to go. San Diego has not scored a touchdown in the ballgame. They have two field goals, Bob Thomas from 24 and 26 yards away, and he has missed from 32 yards out. And now it's second down goal to go at the 11. Herman drops it off to Tim Spencer, and Spencer is hit at the four-yard line. They may mark the progress right at the five. I think they'll mark it at the four, and it's going to be third down and goal to go. Mike Robinson leading the secondary for Kansas City. If there's any question why Deron Cherry is an all-pro football player, there shouldn't be. Even away from the football, he plays very well. He reacts very well. He's involved in every single play. He calls the signals back there. He reacts to the football, comes up, and gets involved in every single hit. Here he makes the initial contact, as we said earlier, the leading tackler for the Kansas City Chiefs. Third down goal to go for San Diego. Into the end zone. Chandler, I did not think had possession in the end zone. I thought he was juggling it when he came back out. Conference is being held, and they say it's a touchdown. But Charlie, the rule is if he has possession of the football, as long as it breaks the plane, it's a touchdown. But let's take a look at it from uh, at, at it from the end zone side. It did not appear from where we were that he had possession while he was in the end zone. Now he is in the air. He comes down, and he's juggling the ball in the field of play. And did not have possession, in my opinion, until about the four-yard line. No, it did not look like he had possession while he was in the end zone. But it's going to count, and it's going to count six points. For Wes Chandler, that is his 10th touchdown of the season, albeit, I must say, in all honesty, a bit tainted. Vince Osby set it up with his interception. Chandler today, three receptions, 48 yards, and the score. And Bob Thomas with the point after. So it's 35 to 13 with 8-19 left to go. We're in the third quarter. We are back after that controversial touchdown, and we'll take another look at that and, and right after the kickoff. And uh, that may be one of the reasons to have instant replay to help the official. But first things first, we're looking at an onside kick attempt right here. Notice this lineup. 35-13. It has to go 10 yards before the kicking team can recover it. They cannot touch it until it goes 10. And he goes deep, a little squib type kick in between everybody. And Lane falls on at the 18-yard line and then can get up, and he returns it to about the 24. Now let's go back to the touchdown. All right, now the rule, Charlie, is not only does he have to have possession while he's the end zone, but possession is judged by whether he has two feet down on the ground or two arms or a shoulder. Here you see he's bobbling the ball immediately and does not have two feet down. He gets the one foot in, but it takes him to the four-yard line to actually have possession of the right. football. But it does stand, 35 to 13 is the score. And Kansas City has the ball, first down at their own 24-yard line. 
Eight minutes and 11 seconds, that is the time remaining in the third quarter. And Mike Pruitt has a couple of yards to the 26, second down and eight. Earl Wilson with the tackle. Now they have not gone to Stephon Page in the second half, is that right? Yeah, and you have to wonder whether it is those ribs that are preventing them from going to Page. Page needing now 45 yards to break the one game all time NFL record that goes back to 1945. He has 259 yards receiving the record is 303. Bass is dropped. Carlos Carson is the intended receiver. Meanwhile, Page was going deep, but was covered. And also, Kenny didn't have all the time in the world to throw. Danny Walters was there for the defense. Third down and eight. Ball at the 26. Let's look at the scoreboard. The Jets comfortably in front of Cleveland. Jets win there in the playoffs. New England, now that's getting a little closer. New England wins there in the playoffs. Miami is in front. Miami wins there. In. Chicago, they're already in. Philadelphia and Minnesota, 24-14. And here is Kansas City, 35, San Diego, 13. Kenny has completed seven of 10 for 149 yards and two touchdowns. There it is, Page! Stephon Page to the 35-yard line. 39 yards on the play. He's now only six yards away. We said earlier, when you're hot, you're hot, and Stephon Page is definitely hot. He makes a tough catch here. Now, you talk about a receiver knowing he's going to get hit. He knew he had to split two safeties in order to make this catch, but he does it even with the cracked ribs. Officially now, his total is 297 yards. And he paid for that hit, Charlie. He came to the sideline, was catching a little bit of wind. You know those ribs are bothering him. So six to tie, seven to break. That's official. And it's a first down. Little play action fake. And it is incomplete to Carlos Carson. Carson was open. The pass was a little high and wobbly. Andy Walters was the defender. I think Kenny a little disappointed. He had uh, Carlos Carson wide open on the sideline. And Page is going back into the ball game. You see the bottom right of your screen coming in number 83. Needs seven yards to set a record that was set back in 1945. Here's Herman Hurd. And Hurd just rambles down the sideline. Jeff Dale bumps him out. A gain of 14 yards on the play. The market at the 21 yard line. The offense of Kansas City is really cranked up right now, and Page is coming out of the game and he's walking very slowly. You've got to believe that he has a, an eight or 10 yard reception still left in him to get that record. With the record on the line, I think he'll go out there and yeah. stand and they'll throw the ball to him. You can bet that. <laughs> The lead blocker is the quarterback, Kenny. And Carson is inside the 10 to the 9, maybe the 8-yard line. And I'm surprised with that call because Kenny becomes the lead blocker. Blackledge has a dislocated thumb. He's out of the game. The, the next quarterback is Deron Cherry, the safety. Deron Cherry Ooh. is also injured. <laughs> yeah, you know, this is not a bad play by the quarterback by <laughs> Kenny. I mean, he throws his body yeah. in there. Usually, you just have a quarterback that tries to talk a defensive back out of making the play. That's right. But here, Kenny actually does throw his body in there. But the but he misses him. <laughs> that's all right. It, <laughs> he did throw them. Yeah. The effort looked the good. The point is, that's right. The, the uniform got dirty, Charlie. Oh, no, that's right. No, you're right. <laughs> Herman Hurd. From the eight to maybe the seven yard line, it's going to be second down goal to go. Chuck Ian making the tackle. Five minutes and 23 seconds, time remaining third quarter. Kansas City 35, San Diego 13. 
the Chiefs are on the warpath. Boy, their offense is pretty cranked up today. And this is a passing formation with Carson in motion. And he hands to a spitback coming inside off a passing formation that's Herman Hurd and did not fool Osby and Green. No, it was Mike Troy, excuse me. It's going to be third down goal to go. So now he will be throwing. With the long hair and the cap and in street clothes, it's Todd Blackledge. Does need a haircut, I must say. Sorry. <laughs> You're just jealous at all that is, right? <laughs> you have no idea how true that is. Oh, just, you just cut me up, and it's so true, so true. <laughs> it's there, touchdown. Carlos Carson. His first touchdown of the game, a flag is down. If it stands, it will be his fifth of the year. It is going to be offensive pass interference. Well, that was that pick play, Charlie. We mentioned it before. The officials are becoming more aware that NFL teams love the pick down the, near the goal line. Pass interference, number 83 offense, third down. And it was Page with the pick that freed up Carson. When the down goes over, it's third down goal to go. All right, watch Page now. His whole idea is to get inside and prevent the defensive back from coming out. The rule in the NFL is simply the same as it is in basketball. If you stand in front of a defender and don't move, then it's not an interference call. But there he was moving. It's a moving pick, and it is a flag. Well, that's still a close call, though, because that's a, that's a pattern that he can run and take the man with him and just clog things up. But you get very good at it, though. You make it look that <laughs> that's way. Right. But you're right. Bottom line, it is a pick. Third down goal to go back at the 16-yard line, and that is Page in motion. Tipped and it's incomplete. Carson, the intended receiver, Davis was there. And Kenny is down. Earl Wilson, number 93, is the man who brought him down. I was just handed the attendance figures, and it is very low. 18,178. And here comes Earl Wilson right at it. Kenny, 8 of 1,388 yards and two touchdowns. Uh -huh, and he gets cleaned up from the bottom end. Tough hit on Kenny. And now you got to think about Deron Cherry coming in and playing quarterback for the Kansas City Chiefs. But also, Jim Arno will be holding for Nick Lowry's field goal attempt. He's the backup holder because Bill Kenny is a normal holder. Boy, Kenny's a tough kid, though. Again, the attendance, just over 18,000 here today. He looks all right. Yeah, he looks like he'll be able to go back in there. I would think the most worried player would have to be Stephon Page because you know he doesn't want Deron Cherry throwing to him. That's a good for point. the record. That's right. <laughs> Thirty-four yard field goal attempt. Arnold is holding a Nick Lowry. Lowry is hit. Twenty-three of twenty-six, ten in a row, and now eleven in a row for Nick Lowry. And it's Kansas City 38, San Diego 13. We'll be back with a kickoff. Minutes and 17 seconds to go in New England. It is now New England 20 and Cincinnati 16. Jim Breach with a 30-yard field goal. And it's getting snugger and snugger in the east. Here it's not that snug. Nick Lowry kicking off. Kansas City out in front, 38 to 13. And here's Little Trey. From the goal line. Kind of cartwheels for 18 yards on the return. And Garcia Lane, his counterpart, the return man for the Kansas City Chiefs, was there to bring him down. And Mark Herman will go to work. San Diego is carrying three quarterbacks for the ballgame. They activated Joe Dufek, so if anything happened to Herman, 
then Dufek would come in and Fouts could play. In case you join us later, weren't aware he has a broken fibula, not a weight-bearing bone in his leg. So he could play. They'd just simply rather that he not play. Anderson coming out in motion. Herman drops this one off to Tim Spencer. And Spencer goes to the 21-yard line where Albert Lewis makes the tackle. Gain of a couple is second down and eight. And the report on Bill Kenny that he was just shaken up and he will be back and that is good news for Stefan Page. And of course for Kansas City. We're going to mark it second and seven at the 22. Buford McGee is out of the game with a hamstring for San Diego. Herman deep over the middle into coverage. Almost picked off again. This was Kevin Ross. The Chiefs have two interceptions. Should have had three. Ron Cherry dropped one in the end zone. And that was almost four. But the bottom line is still two. This is a play that uh, Dan Fouts has made famous. It's a timing play. The receiver goes down, tries to stay wide enough from the safety, and Fouts throws the ball in there. Here, Herman does not execute it as well as Fouts does. And it's nearly picked off by Ross. And this is an offense that Herman is generating that really is a Dan Fouts offense. He is much as an offensive coordinator as he is the quarterback. Is that not correct? Yeah, they build the entire offense around Dan Fouts and his ability. Both are awesome, his abilities and the offense. Little wobbly, but it is there. That's Pete Holohan, the number three tight end. That's the way he's listed. Plays a lot of special teams and does an excellent job. It's very good hands. Played his collegiate ball at Notre Dame, picks up 17, and Lloyd Burris with the tackle. 38 yard line. Anytime you can be listed as the third tight end and catch 38 passes for a club, you're doing That's all right. right. And that being his 39th reception. Kellen Winslow is listed as the first tight end. He has 24 catches. Eric Seaver is the second tight end. He now, I believe, is 41, including this game. And Holohan now is 39. And here's Anderson. And here's Kansas City. Kevin Ross. Boy, it is up to date in Kansas City. The defense and the offense working well today. Anderson must think he has a gyroscope in his head. Watch as he gets spun every which yeah. way, turned over, turned upside down. I mean, what a helpless and, feeling when you get airborne like uh, that. Yeah, because you're you're totally exposed. You can't do anything to help yourself. Once you're up in the air and getting pressure from a defensive player, you have absolutely nothing to do with the outcome of how your body will feel when you hit the ground. Quick out far side to Anderson. Nice make, first down, good cut at the 50. And he goes to the 41 yard line of San Diego. We have to wonder whether Duran Cherry is not bothered by that thigh injury more than we have considered. I don't remember Duran Cherry ever being spaked out like this. Uh, but you know, you gotta look at the other side. Gary Anderson is one of the best people at doing this. Here, Cherry just throws his arm out there and is fooled completely on the play by the move of Anderson. And Anderson picks up 22 yards. As you know, Cherry, we've mentioned, is limping with that thigh injury that he's had uh, last couple of weeks. San Diego now has thrown to nine different receivers. Herman over the middle, high and incomplete. Charlie Joyner couldn't pull it down at the 34-yard line, and Radisek was right behind him. That's a play that, that Charlie will make more times than he will miss. And there's a flag dropped back at the 45-yard line. The preliminary signal is that it is against San Diego Chargers. Tripping, number 60 offense, first down. Tripping the call on Dennis McKnight. And that's interesting. You know, you talked about the fact the officials are looking at, at, at pick plays more. And I've noticed recently, second half of the season, they're looking for more tripping calls. I've seen more tripping calls recently. I think that they get, the, as we take a look at the, the scoreboard, Jets leading Cleveland by 17, so a little breathing room for New York. New England now has opened that up to 27-16. They've got some breathing room. And Miami is 14 to nothing, but Buffalo's hanging in there. Here's Anderson to the 44-yard line. After the penalty took the ball back close to the 50. Troy, I think what happens in those situations is that as the season goes along, the NFL coaches on Monday morning will take a look at films. They'll file a report with the NFL office 
and they'll indicate what they think the officials should be looking for in a lot of instances. And as the season progresses, they start picking up on those trippings. And if you get beat on a pick call, <laughs> you make sure it's in your reports. <laughs> now now you're time. getting down to it. <laughs> they, they're calling and saying where they felt that they got the wrong end of the deal. That's right. That's the way they call it. You, would, you never <laughs> include a pick if you run a pick. That's right. That's yeah. sure. Second down at 13. Herman with pressure. And it is incomplete. Joiner again ricocheting off of the shoulder pad going up. And Kevin Ross, it just took him right out of the play. Of course, once that the ball is touched by a, an offensive player, defensive player, you know, then you can do anything you want to, push and shove and grab. So he just rides him right out of the play, and it'll be third down and 13. Don Coriel, the head coach of San Diego Chargers, with an 8-7 record this morning, looking as if they're going to fly home tonight with an 8-8 record. And Kansas City 5-10 looks at the record this year will be 6-10. Don Coriel, the first coach to win 100 games in the collegiate ranks and the professional ranks. And this one is intercepted. Albert Lloyd has the interception. Chandler, the intended receiver. And that is the third interception for Kansas City. For Albert Lewis, that is his eighth interception on the year. We've got a timeout. Kansas City's got the ball. The score is 38 to 13. And the Albert Lewis with the interception playing very well near the end of the season. He feels he should have made the Pro Bowl. Yeah, this is his sixth interception in the last three football games. And he has been very vocal about what he thinks his ability is. He thinks he's played as well as any quarterback in the league this year, but has not made the Pro Bowl. First down, Kansas City at their own 44-yard line. Carson in motion. And here's Herman Hurd. And Hurd has six yards, 45-yard line, second down and four. And one of the reasons that Lewis did not make the Pro Bowl is the fact he did not play, did not pick up the number of interceptions till late in the season. And the other, he's playing in a secondary of a team whose record is five and ten. So it's really tough, particularly when Deron Cherry makes it. We now have come to the end of the third quarter with the score. Kansas City 38, San Diego 13, and we'll be right back after these messages from your local station. He's in 39 alive. Or not. Kansas City has the ball. Second down and four. And Kenny is decked. Lyndon King is the man who brought him down. And let's see where they'll spot the ball. They're going to mark it back at the 45-yard line. So it's going to be third down and nine. Now, even though Kansas City is an offense, a moment ago you were talking about the, the defensive secondary and you were talking about Albert Lewis and we, we talked about De'Ron Cherry. And Kansas City over the years has had, had very strong secondaries. Why does a team have one particular area that they're strong in? Well, you take a look at a team. They've had uh, Barbaro and they've had Gary Green. The reason is that they find a successful formula for a particular position. They draft those type people and they plug them into a, a secondary or a linebacking core that will make that player successful. Almost pulled down in a one-hand grab by Wayne Davis, the rookie out of Indiana State. So it'll be fourth down, and that means that Kansas City will be kicking. Now that, just to carry that conversation a little further, that also applies to other teams, because some teams will be have strong linebackers, some teams will have strong running backs, some have strong wide receivers. That's right. You can bet the, the uh, New York Giants are looking for linebackers that fit the exact mold of Lawrence Taylor. They may not find one. No. But if they find somebody with the same uh, physical uh, attributes, height and weight, and try to find somebody with that kind of speed, they'll plug him into that exact situation and hope that he can become an all-pro as well. And then, of course, there is always the great exception. And you just saw him right there. Fair catch call by Lionel James. Five, six and a half, 170 pounds out of Auburn, taken in the fifth round of the draft. And he is something very special. Today's game is brought to you by the United States Marine Corps. We're looking for a few good men. By the 1986 Volkswagens. It's not a car, it's a Volkswagen. And by Coors and Coors Light. Beers with a difference worth tasting. Here in Kansas City, the Chiefs are out in front of San Diego 38-13. Now, just in from New England, 27 to 23, Cincinnati closing on the Patriots. Now the Patriots have to win to make the playoff. That's the way it's shaping up right now. 
Herman drops this one off to Anderson. Anderson makes a good move back inside and across the 20, the 21 yard line, a gain of nine, second down and one. Bill Moss makes the tackle on Gary Anderson. Anderson was not in training camp. And I think uh, coming out of the USFL, and I think one of the things that we've seen as uh, San Diego is moving very quickly, and I'll come back to this point. We've seen it around the league this year. And this is Anderson taking the dump off. Good move. And heads for the sideline. Stops the clock. There's 13.47 remaining. Now you say, now why should he stop the clock? I'll tell you why, because you're down 38 to 13. You've got to start thinking about the clock even now if you're going to make that big a comeback. Right, they're going to their two minute drill already with 13 minutes left. First down at the 32 yard line. The Jets comfortably in front of Cleveland now by 20 points. Chicago out in front of Detroit by 20. Bears have been something else this year. Philadelphia by three over Minnesota. Here's Anderson, cuts back against the grain, and uh, he'll get to the line of scrimmage, and that's about it. And it'll be second down and 10. Dave Lindstrom with the tackle. The point being is I, I believe that the players and the fans and everybody involved has said, Training camp is more important than we realize because there's that talk everybody could get ready in two weeks. And those that missed training camp this year simply could not get started. Eric Dickerson is a great example. Anderson on the receiving end here, and he'll lose about three. Dan Marino is another fun example. Yes. I mean, he has turned out to have a, a, having another great year throwing 30 touchdowns in this season, but struggled. Right. At the beginning of the season, he did struggle. He missed the entire training camp period. And players would love to think they could go without training camp. Are you kidding? They'd have to come in and say, hey, coach, listen, I'll just come in the day before the game or a week before, and I can get myself ready. I mean, boot camp is something that you think is over when you get out of the service. You don't need it in the NFL. But uh, I think it's, it's becoming true that you do need that six-week period. Herman, and the pass is complete to Wes Chandler, and Chandler steps out of bounds. Kevin Ross was there for the defense. Chandler presents a, a lot of problems for a defensive back. One, he has that amazing speed where he can go by somebody, but he also has the ability to stop on a dime, and very, receiver, very few receivers can do both. Here he just, you know, he goes downfield. It's a zone defense. He's a veteran receiver. He knows he can just find the hole in the zone, sit in it, and Herman gets him the football. Very smart receiver in Wes Chandler. 44-yard line, gain of 14, and a first down for San Diego. Herman a little high on the far side, and it is incomplete. Chandler, the intended receiver. And another problem that Chandler had, and you can see right, see, notice where the shadow is behind him. He was looking back right in the sun. Right, the ball comes from a shadowy area into the sun. It makes it difficult when it transforms from the dark area to the bright area. He's looking to a sun field and uh, forces him to take his concentration away, and he drops the football. So bring it back to the 44-yard line. Mark Herman has completed 24 of 44 for 241 yards. That's the good news. The bad news is he's been intercepted three times. And Anderson just pops loose up the middle and picks up the first down at the Kansas City 43-yard line to Ron Cherry with the tackle. Or when you're a safety sitting back in the middle of the field, the first read for a Duran Cherry is whether it's going to be pass or whether it's going to be run. There, Cherry made the decision to come up, fill the hole, made the decision very quickly, and made the tackle. Herman to Anderson. Anderson, a couple of, he's really shown some nice moves in this ball game. He's got so much ability. You know, there's a guy who you mentioned did not hit training camp, but with so much ability, really worked himself into the San Diego offense very early on after coming out of the USFL. Second down and four. And here's Anderson to the 29-yard line, and he picks up the first down. He's getting a lot of work in the middle of the field. The first read for a Duran Cherry is whether it's going to be pass or whether it's going to be run. There, Cherry made the decision to come up, fill the hole, made the decision very quickly, and made the tackle. Herman to Anderson. Anderson, a couple of, he's really shown some nice moves in this ball game. He's got so much ability. You know, there's a guy who you mentioned did not hit training camp, but with so much ability, really worked himself into the San Diego offense very early on after coming out of the USFL. Second down and four. And here's Anderson to the 29-yard line, and he picks up the first down. He's getting a lot of work and a lot of quick work because the Chargers are in that two-minute drill. They're moving it out. 38 to 13. 
Lighting the clock, 11 and a half minutes to go in the ballgame. But with the, you know, it's, it's almost strange to say it. I don't want to say it as a hype, but the Chargers are capable of getting right back into this offensively. It's there at the 11-yard line, and it is Gary Anderson. Boyd Burroughs covered him immediately, but Herman Scramble got open and throws to the 11-yard line, and it's first down. They've got to score four touchdowns in order to take the lead here in the fourth quarter. And you're right. We mentioned before they have so much firepower on the outside in the backfield. If there's any team in the NFL that can come back from this kind of a deficit, it is the San Diego Chargers. And they have not hit, you know, the, the long bomb, the 50 or 60 or 70 yarder for the touchdown. Anderson coming inside, and he goes to the five yard line. He picks up six, so it's second down and four. As Hal Stevens makes the stop. But they're doing it in a different way. They're doing it running. I think they're trying to work on some things for next year. They've got to establish a running game to try and keep that passing attack balanced. And they have the ability to do it with Spencer and McGee and Anderson. And, of course, James. They've got a lot of people in the backfield. The ability to establish the running game as well as throw the football. And in reality, in the last couple of times they've had the ball, they've been showcasing Gary Anderson. Herman, is he going to run for the corner? Just put his head down right at the two-yard line. And Sherman Cocroft was the man stopping him at the two. And Herman comes up grimacing. So we'll have an injury timeout. And again, the quarterback situation is that Joe Dufek could well come in for San Diego, and that's what we expect to see. And it's nice to be tough, and it's nice to be a quarterback that can get you the, that kind of yardage, but... Well, he you, don't, you don't want to lose your quarterback. No, you don't. But he doled out a little punishment as well. He yep. hits Kokroff. Kokroff is down as well. Both players are down on the ground. You see Kokroff's uh, right leg getting rolled up on him. And uh, Herman and both both players are down on the ground. Now, Fouts. Now, come on, Dan. If Fouts is stretching. Again, he had, you know, the, the newspaper report, and it, which, is, which is true, is that it's a broken leg but it is a broken fibula, which is a non-weight-bearing bone um, in, his, in his left leg, and, uh, and he could play if necessary. Well, it's over, maybe it's overthrown. We talk about a competitive nature of these players. Obviously, they would not be in the NFL if they did not have this competitive nature, but Fouts may be the, <laughs> the epitome <laughs> of that. He, You're right. He, he's such a tough mental person. I've, I've watched him in practice sessions with the Chargers. He directs things out there, and sure enough, look at this. Now, out of the playoffs, limping out there with 10 minutes left, and he's going to go in and put the ball in the end zone, or try to at least. Now, I started to say something a moment ago, then I didn't want to say it because I was afraid it would come out wrong. When we were talking about the possibility of San Diego coming back, you've got a better possibility with Fouts in their throwing. Yeah. Bad well, leg and all. Right. You have he can run this offense. Any, any team in the league, Dan Fouts could walk in and perform their offense better than their present-day quarterback, but maybe with the exception of Dan Marino in Miami. And then it might be a toss-up. This is the 13th play of the drive that started back San Diego 12-yard line. 27 touchdown passes, 20 interceptions, 59% completion average, the numbers on Dan Fouts. He was a number three draft choice back in 73. Always makes you wonder about the first two in that draft. <laughs> and he gives inside to Spencer, and Spencer pops back out with the ball and goes in for the score. So San Diego picks up six more. They're now up to 19 points, and they've got uh, We've got another point coming up, and Spencer, you know, doesn't have that much experience coming out of the USFL, and here's Fouts. Watch Fouts, and watch his reaction on this play. Now, he's going to stand back. He did his job. He handed the football off. But, uh, yeah. he, he gives the score. That's a touchdown. Hey. Let me go back to the bench and, uh, <laughs> and get myself warmed up again. Spencer from a couple of yards away, and here's Bob Thomas to attempt the point after Mojinko with the hole, and it's right down the middle so now the score is 38 to 20 the margin is 18 points and we'll be back with the kickoff news is that san diego scored the touchdown the bad news is that it took him more than four and a half minutes 
and you look for the onside's kick. It is tough. It is there. San Diego can recover it. They cannot get to it. Kansas City has it. San Diego said no. They got underneath and they did do it. It was first touched by Kansas City. As soon as the ball is touched by the receiving team, then it's a free ball. It doesn't. Then it does not have to go 10 yards. Let me tell you, sitting back there, number 89, Marsh. You know what he's thinking? Please don't kick the football over this side. In fact, Daron Cherry is the one who stepped up and touched the ball before it hit the 10-yard mark. And as you mentioned, Charlie, free ball for anybody. Once that happens, the Chargers come up with it. And Mike Gwindling, number 53, recovers the ball. So the Chargers do it at their own 46-yard line. And it's a first down. They trail now by 18. The combination comes out. They need three touchdowns. And Mark Herman is the quarterback. And the report is that he just had the wind knocked out of him, so he's back in. This is Gary Anderson. A flag is down that'll probably be holding in that offensive line of San Diego. It's going to be first down and 20. That'll cost him a quick 10 yards. Calvin Daniels with the tackle. That's what it is. So they'll take the ball back to the 36-yard line. It'll be first down and 20. We have nine minutes and 28 seconds Holding left to go in the ballgame. First down. Holding call on Dennis McKnight. And Stefan Page is sitting on the sideline. He's, he's been sitting there for quite a yeah. while. That rib is getting a little more sore, probably. He's tightening up a little bit. He only needs one reception, about seven, seven yards, yards to break that yeah. record. And the record that he would break with one reception for seven or more yards. There he is, number 83. One of the oldest in the books. Held by Jim Denton, set in 1945 of 303 yards receiving in one ball game. Here's Anderson. Just across the 50-yard line. He'll get about 15 of it back. It's going to be second down and five. And Herman is barking out signals at the line of scrimmage, running that two-minute offense with nine minutes left to go in the game. Mark it second down and six, and Herman comes out throwing. Far side. Pete Holahan with the reception. It was Greg Hill that came over the top trying to knock the ball down. That was a good play. And the first down at the 44-yard line. Gain of six. <laughs> Can't run the replay because here come the Chargers. Anderson has it. Two blockers out in front, which will fake inside. He goes out of bounds, stops the clock with 8.26 left to go. Another heady play just stopping the clock because they had, they started using the clock at about the 13-minute mark. Close to 10 on the play. Be second down and one. Eric Holly checks into the defensive set for Kansas City. And here's Mark Herman. Anderson picks up the first down. He has a nice gliding style coming inside, doesn't he? He's a slashing runner. Very few people get an open, clean shot at Gary Anderson because he's a slasher. He always comes to a point and slashes just like a, a skier might do, down the slopes, never straight ahead. And here's Anderson on the draw. Inside the 25, 24 yard line. He'll pick up about seven and it's second down and three. And the Chargers are moving on the ground. Check of the scoreboard, New England 34, Cincinnati 23. Patriots have a little bit of breathing room. The Jets have their breathing room. And Miami continues to lead Buffalo. And it looks as if Denver may be home for Christmas. Here's Anderson, 22 yard line, gain of a couple. So it'll be third down and about one. Denver's going to have a record, or they have a record now of 11 and five, and will be home for Christmas, which Almost seems unfair. It must be difficult for them, yeah, but like you said before, who said life was fair? Yeah. It must be difficult for them sitting home and waiting to find out if they'll be in the playoffs or not. It's a very helpless feeling, I'm sure. Permanent pressure, and there's a sack. Second sack in the ball game for Kansas City, and the first one came in the first quarter. It's been a long time between sacks. Calvin Daniels got this one his third of the year. And this has to have Herman. They, they had a blitz on here. Lewis, the cornerback, coming from the outside. And he gets sandwiched in between a couple of players. And that is not a pleasant feeling, I'm sure, for Herman. He'll have a well-deserved rest and a long time to heal up after this season ends. It's going to be fourth down. And about 12 to go for the first down with the ball back at the 33-yard line. Yeah, 
Lips coming for the secondary. The pass, a battle for it, and it pops loose. Almost a simultaneous catch between Wes Chandler and Kevin Ross. And if you'd have had that situation, it goes to the offensive player, but Kansas City will take over and down, but there's a flag. There's a flag back of the 45. Let's take another look. Now, Herman throws the ball up for grabs here. He knows that uh, Chandler's running an out route, but not open whatsoever, and really Chandler does a nice job playing the defensive back, nearly comes up with the football on the sideline. First no foul on the third up this number 50. First down. Meanwhile, Calvin Daniels gets hit with the penalty, and that was fourth down. Kansas City would have had the ball. They could have thrown to Stephon Page. But now with the flag and the first down, the ball is at the 18-yard line, and San Diego retains possession. In penalty, San Diego six for 72. Kansas City five for 50, and we have 6.54 left to go in the ballgame. Herman's pass far side is complete to the mystery man, Tremaine Johnson. That is only his third reception this season, his first catch in nine weeks, and he did not play the last two games. And he's not played a great deal of football. He missed last year's USFL season. There's the final score now. New England are in the playoffs. 34 to 23 win. And here's Lionel James as he goes to about the eight yard line. So congratulations to the New England Patriots. They are in as a wild card. It looks as if they were playing the be playing the New York Jets in New York. And Miami, it looks as if, will be the champions of the East. And the fourth quarter, that's the last score we have. It's been that way for quite a while. And the Raiders are in. Miami. And Cleveland also. And Cleveland. I keep forgetting about Cleveland with. At 8-8, eight eight, our second division record. champion. Lionel James, does he make it? So it is 38 to 26 with the touchdown of James. And we have 544 and San Diego is creeping back. Watch the incredible quickness of James. He has to beat the defender to the corner of the end zone, scoots around, beats the angle, gets one foot in. That's all he needs for the score. Here's the extra point attempt. And it is good. So the score is now Kansas City 38 and San Diego 27. 544 left to go. It's not over yet. It's kick, and this time Kansas City has the ball as Walt Arnold, the tight end right at the 50 yard line. Oh, he took a hold of it and did not want to let it go. So Kansas City has the ball, and now we expect we'll take another look. And that is a suicide squad when you're standing there trying to catch that ball because you know you're fair game. They come down there and if the ball is bouncing up in the air, many times you'll be looking to the football and you get sidelined by, uh, by a defender coming down. It's a difficult duty to try to catch an onside kick. Stephon Page is split to the top of the screen. Needs seven yards to break one of the oldest records in the book. Set in 1945 with the Cleveland Rams. And he knew it right away, oh, too. Yeah. You could tell. Big smile came on his face. The only All thought right. he had was to catch the ball and get up field. Never mind getting more yardage. Yeah. Don't come back to the football. Watch the smile break out of his face. I just could quash a minute. Watch, just watch the smile. There it is. <laughs> oh, that's a great shot. That is a great shot. 38 yard line, first down. Bad ribs and all. Here's Carlos Carson on the reverse. Kenny out in front was kind of a screen block. And Carson is swung down by Vince Osby. 
I am wondering, the plays are coming in from the sideline. The coaches in our booth next to us are calling the plays down. They keep getting Kitty as a blocker. <laughs> I'm wondering, I wonder if they're sending signs or signals. I think Kenny is sending a signal up here saying, hey, fellas, <laughs> don't right. call that in. No, I'm an audible out of that play. <laughs> San Diego takes the timeout. That stops the clock at the 446 mark. And the ball at the 37 yard line. And it'll be second down and nine when play resumes. It's Kansas City 38, San Diego 27. At halftime, it was Kansas City 35, San Diego 6. So in the second half, Kansas City has been held to a field goal, and San Diego has picked up three touchdowns. John Makovic, the head coach of the Chiefs. And we've got another final score in Miami, shutting out Buffalo 28 to nothing. So Miami, the champions in the East, and they will then host the first playoff, the divisional playoff. They will host the divisional playoff. Is that correct? That's correct. And now Monday night becomes very important because it's a two-edged sword for the Dolphins and for the Raiders. If they, if the Raiders win Monday night and get home field advantage, it means that they will get the wild card team that they'll have to play, the Raiders would, and a better team in either New York or New England, while the Dolphins, who would not get home field advantage for that first week, would get the Cleveland Browns to play. And obviously, a much easier task than playing New England yeah. or New York. The Jets 20, uh, 37, Cleveland 10. And that last score came with 20 seconds in that ball game. So uh, that one is wrapped up. Kansas City's passing offense, 343 yards. Blackledge, who started through for 143. Kenny, who came in to replace him when Blackledge had the injured hand. Throwing for 200 yards. And Carson shows motion. Second down and nine. And here's Pruitt. And he is caught from behind by Woodrow Lowe. Woodrow just comes over the top and takes him down at the 38-yard line. So he'll lose a yard. It's going to be third down and 10. And San Diego takes their second timeout. Yeah, and it's a smart play. You know, no one has, says that you have to wait until the final couple yeah. of seconds to utilize the timeout. Smart to use it now. You might as well go ahead and save the clock as you go up top here. Now they need uh, two touchdowns in order to go ahead in the football game. So to utilize the clock now with four and a half minutes left to go. Smart play by Don Coriel and the San Diego Chargers. And the Chargers still have the one timeout remaining. Kansas City, for the record, has three. And the other thing to always consider is that you, when you're on offense, you can control the clock. So the time is to call it now, and not wait, you're right, now we don't let it get down to the two-minute mark. Hopefully you can get it now, you can get something big, and, uh, and, and get closer, and then interesting things can always happen in the last couple of minutes of the ballgame. But don't let it run down to there. Now, time of possession, you get a feeling that San Diego has had the ball most of the time in the second half. Well, they have. 31, a little over 31 minutes, this is a complete ballgame, to 23 for the Chiefs. San Diego had an edge in the first half, but an even larger edge in the second half, I think. Yeah, during this uh, fourth quarter, they took the ball with about 13 minutes left, drove down the field, got the onside kick. There you see the final score, 37 to 10. The Jets get the wild card. And Cleveland still... So the, the so the division next team. Saturday, am I right? Next Saturday at 3.30 Eastern time, this information being passed on, uh, they will. Be, the Jets will be hosting the New England Patriots in the wild card. That game is going to be on Saturday. That's a question mark. 3.30 next Saturday. All right. New England 34, Cincinnati 23. Is the Giant game then going to be on Sunday afternoon? They're not sure of that. There was some talk. The Giants said they might like to play Saturday night. So just kind of we're a little bit of the rumor mill of the National Football League this afternoon. Yeah. <laughs> No, Kenny throwing in the pass is incomplete. Pass Ethan is Horton, the intended receiver. Coverage. Gil Bird had the coverage on the play. So now with the incomplete pass, the clock stopped at 4.33. Miami winning 28 to nothing. They are the champions of the East. And Jim Arnold will be kicking. Wild card information next Saturday. 2.30 p.m. Eastern, New England at the New York Jets. Lionel James. Set to return the kick. The Chargers will go right into that hurry of offense of theirs. This is going to go into the end zone for the automatic touchback, so we'll bring the ball out to the 20 yard line. San Diego trails by 11 points. 
with four minutes and 26 seconds left to go in the ball game. And Mark Herman, the quarterback, comes out to crank up this offense. The sparse crowd has stayed here throughout the Minnesota football game. I think they're enjoying watching Kansas City do so yeah. well here. They, they've waited quite a while for Kansas City to play this well, and today on the last day of the season have performed very admirably. And a chance to see Stephon Page set one of the great records of the National Football League. Herman has completed 30 of 41 passes, and this one is incomplete. Chandler had come back inside. And boy, there wasn't anybody that close. Woo. And Chandler was wide open. Herman's looking downfield saying, uh, I think we got crossed up, and that's exactly what happened. I don't think Chandler has an option here. You know, many times a receiver will have an option whether to break in or to break out. Here they simply miss communications, and he breaks inside. Herman throws the ball back out. And also, they read off of what the defense does. So you have it's a very tough deep, a, a very tough offense from a young receiver standpoint because you have to react to what the defense does. All right, they'll run patterns based on whether the defense is a man-to-man -man or a zone coverage. Over the middle into coverage and almost intercepted. Kansas City has three interceptions. That was Mark Robinson who has one earlier. They, they, they could have had three more. Lionel James, the intended receiver. They have been very close. Woo. Now Herman has thrown the ball into coverage quite often today. He makes his mind up very early here to go to Lionel James coming down the middle. It's actually a very good throw. He pinpointed the ball very well, and the only thing that saved it was that great play by Mark Robinson. Third down and 10. The ball still back at the 20-yard line. Lionel James, 229 combined yardage in the ball game, and that's the new record in the NFL, and that's the season record. And we've got flags down. Third down and 10 at the 20-yard line, and we've got flags down. Four minutes and 12 seconds, time remaining here. Pass interference called against Kansas City at the 40-yard line, so it's a 20-yard penalty. It's on Albert Lewis, and it's a first down. Albert Lewis gets caught with his hand in the proverbial <laughs> cookie jar. He's looking back, though. You know what? You know, the interpretation of the rule is, is a very nebulous thing. It is. He was looking back at his hand on the offensive receiver. And Lionel James goes to the Kansas City 47-yard line. So he picks up 13 and the first down. 3.57 and counting. That is the time remaining. Lloyd Burroughs with the tackle. James is totaled now for this game. All yardage is up to 242. And here's Pete Holahan as he goes out of bounds. Now, the, you know, we keep, we, here's a look at the score, but we keep talking about Lionel James and the record. Well, the record that he's talking about, he now has broken Terry Metcalf's record. And his combined yardage for the year is now at 2,535 yards. And he keeps adding to that record. I'm not going to bring that specific number up anymore. But that's the kind of record that he's had this year. Anderson with a fumble, back to recover. It was second down and one. And with the fumble, it's going to be third down and about four. So he'll lose three on the play. And the two-minute drill continues for San Diego. They started it about a minute and a half in to the fourth quarter, going deep, and he just overthrows everybody. He was looking for Charlie Joyner, perhaps to break behind the secondary, and they didn't. He wasn't able to do it. Yeah, well, again, that's an option by the receiver. He has the choice of either hooking up in the middle of the field if it's a deep zone or going over the top if it's man-to-man, -man, and they miscommunicated. Charlie thought he should hook up because there was a safety in the middle. Herman thought he was going to go over the top and try to break it for a big one. So the Chargers face fourth down. A little over four yards, maybe five. 321 left to go in the ballgame. Kansas City 38. San Diego clawing their way from behind. Now 27, trailing by 11. 
Harmon with lots of time. Scrambles, throws, it's there, and it is caught by Holahan, and it is a first down at the 30-yard line, a gain of 12, and the Chargers continue. Lloyd Burroughs, a strong safety, makes the, makes the stop, and I've got to believe that Stephon Page is happy that he had that reception and the record the last time Kansas City had the ball because they may not get the ball again. Sideline pass is complete to West Chandler, and he'll stop the clock at the 20-yard line and probably will pick up the first down to see where they mark the football. We've got 2.53 left to go. The Chargers will also have that two-minute warning to rely on to stop the clock, and as you said, offensively, you're able to stop the clock anytime time you'd like by simply throwing the ball out of bounds. There is the score. Two touchdowns to win it. 2.53. It's possible. Oh, it sure is at this point. Yes. And San Diego's one out of two on onside kicks in the ballgame. Timing pattern. Leaping catch is there. And it is Trumaine Johnson, his first touchdown of the year. That is only his fourth reception of the year. He has two in this ballgame and a touchdown. Now, he's someone who did not have the benefit of a training camp, as we mentioned earlier. But here it's just pure physical ability, leaping ability. As I said earlier, when the ball is in the air as a receiver, a defensive back, you have to enough, have enough confidence to think, hey, this ball is mine. I don't care who's going to come in front of me. It's mine. And there Tremaine Johnson proves it. He goes up and takes the ball away from the defensive back. Touchdown, San Diego. And Bob Thomas to attempt the point after us. Now, 38 to 33. It is good. It is 38 to 34. The Chargers trail by four points. With plenty of time, 2.48 left. They don't really even have to onside kick if they choose not to here. But I get the feeling they'll go for it. Well, They've gone for no, two in the past. No, I, I agree with you, except for one thing, because then you're turning it over to your defense, and uh, the defense is not that strong. No, they're not. And they do have time to hold to Kansas City and get the football back if they so choose. It's just when you go for two onside kicks, earlier in the football game. I don't know if you want to go away from it. You'd hate to kick the ball downfield, not take the chance of them turning it over on the onside kick, no. and then having them control the football for the remainder of the game. I'll tell you, Mark Herman's had a pretty good day. He's completed 36 of 58. He's thrown for 362 yards. 58 attempts. It's a lot <laughs> of time lot to go back and throw the football. And he's thrown for touchdowns to Wes Chandler and to Jermaine Johnson. And remember our doubts at the end of the first half on the field goal? San Diego, Bob Thomas. What doubts? <laughs> <laughs> oh, how quickly you forget. All of a sudden, it is my doubt. Because there was no guarantee. You know, that three points now makes a lot of difference. Yes, it does. We're looking at another onside kick. It's got to go 10 or be touched. And falling on it is Henry Marshall of Kansas City. And player is still a little bit over anxious and it's really Marshall fell on it about the 48 yard line and as he did Pete Holahan came down to see if he could wrestle the ball away meanwhile about four players continued about five yards down in a pushing and shoving and falling contest but the ball was five yards away well there is the question we raised at the beginning of the game do players go out and try to win a football game even though it doesn't mean anything? Obviously, there is a great deal of pride out here. They want to win this last football game of the year. The Chargers would not come back from this big a deficit if they didn't care. And I've got a, I've got a question that I want to ask you right after this play. 47-yard line, 2.44 is the time remaining. Chiefs lead by four. Carson in motion. Herman Hurd. Kansas City is going to run the ball. They want to use up the clock. No game. Second down and 10. Mike Green was there. And San Diego is going to take their last timeout. And they still have that two-minute warning as a timeout. The Jets, they're in the playoffs as a wild card, and they will host the wild card. And they will host New England as they beat Cincinnati 34-23. And Miami is the champion of the East. Detroit wins by uh, loses by 20 to Chicago, or is losing by 20. That's not over yet. Minnesota hey, by one. Eagles fourth quarter. Game still going. Green Bay, Tampa Bay, and the closest of these scores and what's happened here, I think, point out exactly what you were talking about. And a six point deficit in that difference in that ballgame. My question is, 
even though they're professional players, you were a professional player, it's a game, and they keep score. And if you're competitive, I don't care if it's pitching pennies against the wall. If they keep score, you want to win. Oh, you're absolutely yeah. right. Plus, when you're out there, if you're an offensive guard, you got to make a trap block. While you're out there executing the play, you're not thinking about whether or not this play will provide a playoff possibility or not. You're simply going out, and you're conditioned to go out and make the block, regardless if it's going to provide a playoff for you or not. You're in the middle of it. It's instinct. You do it time and time again. You know, I hate to say it, but as professional football players, and I was one of them, you're so conditioned that you do the same thing automatically over and over again. There's an axiom in looking at Don Correa. Are you coachable or not? Do you do the things that coaches ask from you every time? And to be not coachable is a very big negative in this league. And so you go out and you do those things regardless if it provides the opportunity for a championship or not. And if you do them often enough and well enough, then that provides the road to the championship. Absolutely. Second down and 10. San Diego out of timeout. They'll have the two-minute warning working for them. Kansas City will run and stay on the ground and let the clock go to the two-minute warning. Mike Pruitt to the 43. It's going to be third down and six. And uh, this will take us down to the two-minute mark because the 30-second clock has not started. And there's 219. Now the 30-second clock has started. So Kansas City will just stand around. Kenny will come to the sideline. Nothing here that the Chargers can do. They can stop the next play, which the next play then becomes the key to San Diego's future. They have to stop the next play. From then on, they can just run it out. All right, two-minute warning. We'll take a timeout. Hey, it's not over yet. We'll be back in just a moment. A.D. and T. back in pass coverage, and his dramatic interception with two seconds left saved a Buffalo win. The Bills made the right choice. This is Charlie Jones, Jimmy Cephalo. Two minutes to go in the ballgame. Kansas City just holding on to a 38-34 lead. Bill Kenny, the quarterback, Todd Blackledge started the ballgame with an injured thumb, dislocated thumb, and is on the sidelines in civilian clothes. They're going to put in a cast tomorrow. Kansas City has been held to one field goal in the second half. The Chiefs were up 35 to 6 at halftime, and San Diego was held to two field goals in the first half. And here's the scores by quarter. Give you an idea. Kansas City with a big, big second quarter, 7, 28, 3, and 0. And San Diego finally chugging in that second half. And Stephon Page, he owned that second quarter. Didn't yes. for Kansas City. That's when he really made the run of the record. More than 200 yards, 259 actually, in the first half alone. Third down and set. If the Chargers have a chance, they've got to stop Kansas City here. Oh, it's close. Ever so close. And I believe that Mike Pruitt did it for the Chiefs. Kansas City, the team without a running attack, needing six tough yards against a defense that knows that they have to run, picks up seven. And now Kansas City can simply run out the clock because the Chargers can't stop it. Now, here's a veteran for you. He knows exactly what the situation is. He knows exactly where he has to get for the first down. And he's crawling, scratching. I, you know, I got a lot of respect for somebody like Mike Pruitt. Been cut a couple of times. A lot of pride because he was an all-pro player. Yet, it comes out of him. It's what we said before. Uh, it doesn't matter if it's a championship on the line. You simply go out and you do your job. And now the Chiefs, all they have to do is fall on the ball and let the 30-second clock run, and let the game clock run. The Chargers cannot stop it. The Chargers with a gallant effort. Who would have thought? And they didn't play that well in the first half, offensively or defensively, but they came back in the second half to make a game of it. So a good finishing story for both teams. Yeah, I think they can both go home and uh, with a little bit of pride, saying that they've got a, a good foot up on next season. They know that the coaches will be back next year. The programs will continue for both teams. And that's a comforting thought, because as a player, you have to know that the guy who brought you in, the guy who's been your coach, has confidence in you as a player. And there's a lot as the clock continues to count down. And isn't there a lot to having the, co the continuity of the same offense, of the same defense, of 
knowing of, of being familiar and not having to come in with new terminology and that type of thing? Yeah, and, and I think uh, Lamar Hunt alluded to it before the game when I spoke to him, talking about the fact that you can't keep changing coaches every couple of years if you really want to establish a program. Somewhere along the line, you have to have enough faith in a coach to say he's on the right track and eventually he's going to make us a winner. And so there's the final countdown, and the season is over for the Chiefs and the Chargers. The final once again here. Kansas City 38, San Diego 34. For Jimmy Cephalo, I'm Charlie Jones. Well, the temperature was a bit better than it had been this past week in Kansas City. At kickoff time, it was in the mid-40s, and it had been a lot lower than that. And the wave from Stephon Page as he sets a new NFL one game receiving record breaking one of the oldest records in the book. It was set by Jim Denton back in the year of 1945. And now stay tuned for Bob Costas, the NFL Budweiser Report, right after these messages from your local... First quarter at Arrowhead Stadium, Todd Blackledge, 56 yards to Stephon Page. It was just the beginning for Mr. Page. He'd wind up catching passes for 311 yards on the day. That breaks a 40-year-old NFL record. This is the Budweiser NFL Report, brought to you by Budweiser, Beachwood Age, for that clean, crisp taste. This Bud's for you. Hi again, everybody. The playoff situation just about set in the AFC. The Jets win today against Cleveland 37 to 10. They trailed it only one time. In the first quarter, they were down 7 to 3. After that, they got it together and they romped. Let's take a look at some of the highlights from the Meadowlands. Giants coach Bill Parcells watches from the runway. His team clinched home field advantage in the wild card round of the NFC with yesterday's victory against the Steelers. Now today, the Jets are in front 3-0 as Dave Jennings punts from deep in his own end zone late in the first quarter. Brian Brennan will feel it for the Browns and 37 yards later he's back in that end zone and the Browns have a short-lived 7-3 lead. Jennings couldn't catch up with him but on the next possession the Jets come right back and they take the lead for good. They'll be ahead 10-7 after this weird play. O'Brien's pass apparently intercepted by Don Rogers but Kurt Sohn just rips it away. It becomes a 39-yard Jet touchdown. Before the half ended Gastino separated Kozar from the ball. Crable recovered. A couple of plays later Johnny Hector goes in for the TD. Jets led 7 17-10 at that point, shut the Browns out in the second half, and they win it 37-10. And with that victory, they not only become the wild card team, but they ensure themselves a wild card advantage, home field advantage in that game against the New England Patriots this coming Saturday. That game will be seen on NBC, beginning with NFL 85, at 3.30 this Saturday. The kickoff is at 4 o'clock from the Meadowlands. The Patriots at the Jets. The Patriots put themselves in as a wild card team, finishing at 11 and 5 by beating Cincinnati 34 to 23. Let's go to Foxborough for some highlights. Julius Adams, age 37, 15th year with the Pats, final game before the home fans. They acknowledge him, as do his teammates. Now, with the score even at three in the first quarter, Tony Eason with the play action fake and the textbook bomb to Stanley Morgan, who has caught plenty of these in his career. 50 yards for the touchdown. Eventually, they go up 20 to six. Then in the third quarter, Boomer Esiason rallies the Bengals, fires this one to the electrifying rookie Eddie Brown out of Miami. It becomes a 33-yard touchdown. A Jim Breach field goal brings them to within 20 to 16, but then Craig James takes this lateral, and that's what it is. Officially, it's a run, not a pass. 12 yards for the TD, and there's Irving Fryer leading the cheers along the sidelines. He's a demonstrative young man. A little bit later, Robert Weathers had a 42-yard touchdown run for the Patriots. They wind up winning it 34 to 23. James carried 25 times for 142 yards. That's a career high. New England at 11 and 5 in the playoffs. Miami is the champion in the AFC East. They get a first round bye. They beat Buffalo 28 to nothing. Mark Duper was ejected during the first quarter after a scuffle with rookie defensive back Derek Burrows of the Bills. So the Dolphins did it without them. Their seventh consecutive victory. Bruce Hardy makes the catch on this 19-yarder. It completes a touchdown drive on their first possession in the first quarter. Then in the second period, they go up 14-0. It's Marino to Hardy again. This one is a five-yarder. And this play in the second quarter illustrates why the Bills wound up at 2-14. and 14. Joe Cribs on fourth and inches could not get the first down. The Dolphins take over on downs, and they wind up this year 
with a record of 12 and 4 for the regular season. Buffalo was guilty of six turnovers today. Marino finishes the regular season with 30 touchdown passes. That's the top mark in the league. Last year, of course, the record 48. Got off to a slow start following a holdout this season, and Duper was missing with injuries. When he got back to form that tandem again with Clayton, Marino got hot, and so too did the Dolphins. Now, here is the playoff situation. As we have told you, New England plays at the Jets Saturday in the wild card game. Miami gets a bye, and Cleveland, with their record of 8-8, eight and eight, is the champion in the AFC Central. Cleveland will be playing at Miami in the second week of the playoffs. The wild card winner, either the Patriots or the Jets, will play at the Raiders in the second week of the playoffs. Now, tomorrow night, the Raiders play the Rams. If the Raiders win that game, they ensure themselves home field advantage throughout the AFC playoffs, in which case a Miami Raider matchup down the line would take place in Los Angeles. If, however, the Rams beat the Raiders, then home field belongs to Miami in that possible AFC title game confrontation with the Raiders. And it's interesting to note that 12 of the last 15 Super Bowl champions have had home field advantage throughout the playoffs. We'll be back with more as the NFL Report, Budweiser NFL Report, continues. This bug's for all Games in progress. Dallas leads San Francisco at Candlestick 7 to nothing. One yard pass from Hogaboom to Doug Cosby. If Dallas wins and the Rams lose tomorrow night to the Raiders, Dallas has home field advantage in the NFC playoffs if they have to go against the Rams. A Ram victory tomorrow night gives them home field against everybody in the conference except, of course, the Chicago Bears. San Francisco's situation, this game is even more important for them. If they win, they're a wild card and Washington is out. San Francisco plays at the Giants on Sunday. If San Francisco loses to Dallas, they're eliminated and it's Washington at New York in the NFC wildcard game. Indianapolis scored a touchdown a moment ago. They lead at home in the first against Houston, 7 to nothing. Chicago beat Detroit today. The final score in that one, 37-17. The Bears wind up 15-1. and A moment of levity in that game when Refrigerator Perry picked up a fumble and rambled 59 yards with the return. He was caught from behind, but the 300-pounder flashed some speed on that occasion. Minnesota and Philadelphia still in progress at Minnesota. The Vikings have the lead in Jan Stenner Roots final game in the NFL, 35 to 34. In the game you have just watched, Kansas City led 35-3 at one point. The Chargers with another of their great comebacks, but they fall just short, losing 38-34 for Stephon Page. Eight catches, 311 yards. It breaks the single game reception yardage record, which had stood since 1945 when Jim Benton of the Cleveland Rams had 303 yards in receptions. The Rams quarterback, they were in Cleveland then, was a rookie named Bob Waterfield back in 1945. Green Bay beats Tampa Bay 20 to 17. Tampa Bay finishes 2 and 14. The Packers finish even at 8-8. Eight and eight. Tampa Bay has the first pick in the next NFL draft. Atlanta wins at New Orleans. The final score there is 16-10. Atlanta's Gerald Riggs rushed for 158 yards. Marcus Allen will need 84 tomorrow night to overtake him for the season's rushing championship. We'll be back.